Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. You'll get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And when I'm not asking Bruce, hey, how big was Batista's? Well, you know. One of the things I like to do is help people save money. And if you're watching this video right now and you're in a 30 year loan, man, you're overpaying your single biggest bill and you may not even realize it. I want you to do a little experiment for me. Take your calculator out, multiply your monthly house payment by 360 payments. That's how many payments there are in a 30 year loan. That big scary number, that's your total of payments. You're looking at that number? You know you can do better. Keep more of your own money right now and go to savewithconrad.com. Or maybe you've got credit card debt. Man, it's not a matter of if I can save you money with that. Your average interest rate on a credit card is more than 20%. And by the way, all the interest you pay on those credit cards, it's not tax deductible. Whereas the mortgage interest, well, that is tax deductible. So if you owe this debt, it's up to you how to pay it back. Doesn't it make sense to get the cheapest rate possible and the greatest tax deduction possible? Find out how much money you can save right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit, even scores in the 500s can be approved, and it's no cost out of pocket. But maybe best of all, we're licensed in more than 40 states. We can help more families than ever before. But how much can we save you? Find out right now for free with a quick quote from SaveWithConrad.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Welcome to WHW Monday. Tony Schiavone and Conrad Thompson. Jim Crockett for Starcade, 605 NWA. TV title, Cajun Omni, the Bunkhouse Stampede. Flair and Horseman, Garvin, Bogey, Magnum, Dusty, Express Tag Team. Turner bought in Mid-South Joint World Championship Wrestling. Talking about the great years of World Championship Wrestling, the NWA and Jim Crockett Promotions. Tony answers what they win, look Shivani's back again. World title split off, center stage, Bischoff, Disney, Hogan, and Nitro, New World Order and the Crow. Thunder Russo, Arquette Champ, Vinnie Mac, simulcast. Tony's back with Conrad, not your classy podcast. Watch a long time not to laugh, Lois rules, cat back. This wasn't the initial plan, Tom Ziggs a good looking man. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? But the man of the hour, ladies and gentlemen, the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? Feeling good. Feeling good about life. Feeling good about being here and doing the show with you and uh, feeling good about us being able to watch another ECW show here. ECW. ECW. <laughs> <laughs> uh... How fat is Paulie in these? Oh, yeah. what? Cause he is one fat ass. I mean, he is one blown up pumpkin head fat ass. Well, okay. But I mean, well, just well, hang on now, Tony. Okay. We need to talk about okay. this. He, he probably would go out and say, I am the advocate. Instead of saying, I am the dietitian for Brock Lesnar. Why are you doing this? I just, I was asking just simple questions. Well, I'd like to explain. You think he's been sucking on the air hose for like 10 years? Why are you saying that? To forget the name of Yeah, <laughs> my bad. Why are you That's... saying that? I don't know. No, I mean, just, well, you, just was randomly curious. you're picking on Paul. Mm -hmm. And listen, as a fat guy. Mm -hmm. What you opening up there? A bag of chips? That's a swim. Okay. I was a fat guy. Mm-hmm. I think you stepped over the line. No, 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 no. No. No, it's been the rules. We talked about this that mm. as a fat guy. Mm-hmm. Press for present. Mm -hmm. You can't call people fat. Like you can't do that, Tony. I, I should I, I didn't say he was Did I say he was fat? Mm -hmm. I just oh, said yeah. he was okay. Well, anyway, uh, being a fat ass or not, 
uh, he uh, certainly knew how to he knew how to create. He was one of the most creative guys out there, and I can say that without question. Okay, but you fin- you finished your Cheetos yet? We didn't talk about this. You stepping out of turn, like. Let's not forget when you started this podcast, you were fat too. Well, yeah, yes, sir. If I don't, if we don't, well, I'm, I'm one that, yeah. And you know, I, I'm just having fun. I've got to watch my weight every day. I've got to count calories every day, every day. Um, uh, I tried that, but I lost count. Mm, yeah. So you're on your first bag of Cheetos a day. Paulie's probably about on his 10th. I'm not eating Cheetos, but if I was. Mm-hmm. You know where I get them from? Uh, where? Super Dave. Come on. Oh, that's right. But he likes those uh, flaming hot. Flaming hot. Yeah. Who? Who? Besides Super Dave's like flaming hot. No, nobody likes that. Well, I guess somebody is because they got to sell them, and they're still out there in the market. I I don't get it. Number one seller, legit. Is it really? Hmm. I really love Cheetos. I do love Cheetos, but I, no, I don't go for don't. the flaming hot stuff. I mean, you've talked about this. You mm-hmm. like cheese poofs and puffs. I like I like the poofs. Yeah, the no, cheese poofs. Crunchy is the move. Mm, I don't know. I like the poofs. I grew up with the poofs. Get any poof these days? <laughs> no poof at all these days. <laughs> uh, no poof at all. Box myself into a corner here with this eating. Can you tell everybody what we're watching? Yes, we are watching ECW's WrestlePalooza 1998. Uh, we are going to see, uh, well, I'm going to see my buddy, my buddy Taz, I'm sure. We're going to see Shane Douglas and Al Snow for the ECW World Championship. We're also going to see Sabu and Rob Van Dam. Wow, oh, wow, that's going to be good. Uh, who else are we going to see? Uh, and I guess, uh, didn't this come from... Uh, with Dudley Boys, Tommy Dreamer, Sandman, Bam Bam Bigelow, New Jack. Uh, and didn't this come from, uh, didn't they do this? Did they do this in Georgia? Right up the road from you, baby. Okay. So it was done in the great state of uh, Just Incredible. Lance Storm, Chris Candido, Balls Axel, Blue Meanie, FBI, Supernova. Man, some good shit on this card. And I believe it's the final appearance of JYD. Wow. Before he, uh, yeah, before he had the heart attack, I guess. Before he wrecked his car. Well, didn't he have a heart attack and wrecked his car? I think Wasn't that's that Macho it? Man. Okay. I think I have, yeah. Okay. So yeah. Sylvester just wrecked his car and, and, yeah, and he died. fell asleep and, and, and got dead. Mm-hmm, got dead. Yeah. So, uh, we're talking about May 3rd, 1998. Mm-hmm. And, uh, this was a special show to me. I'm really excited to watch it with you. And I'm Why excited. was it special to you, Conrad? Well, it's an ECW pay-per-view that hadn't been doing them a long time. I was a big ECW fan mm-hmm. and they were trying some new stuff. It was a pretty big deal for Shane Douglas to work this match. He, uh, has a horrible story about getting to the show because he was in bad shape. He's injured and Al snow, man, head's been over as long as you've been alive, but he mm. got head over to another level. A head was drawing money. <laughs> And Head's always drawn money, but usually in, you know, $20 increments, but Head was drawing big money here. And well, I guess it was getting $20 from a lot of people. So I guess Head was the same amount of, anyway, if you hmm. want to go ahead and give us a little bit of a countdown, we can watch the show together. What do you think? We'll watch together. <clears throat> we'll watch the show together. You ready? I'm ready. Three. Oh, by the way, go to ECW, uh, Russell Palooza, 1998 on your WWE network. Oh, okay, cool. We kind of figured that out. You fuck. Yep. Okay. <laughs> In three, two, one play. Now here's the thing. You said play after you hit play. I heard you click. And then you said play you're fucking us up by a second. We'll never get that second back now, Tony. Just turn it up. Okay. Here we go. Track it. I'm Tony Styles. Sit back. Relax. Enjoy the next three hours, and I promise at the end of the night, none of you will ever be able to forget the name of Wrestlepalooza! I'm marking out inside right now. Extreme 
Here's your favorites right here, FBI, baby. Yeah, baby. How about that? Woo, Tommy woo. Rich. And uh, my God, it's it's Tracy Smothers. What's he going to grab? He's got an Italian flag. He must be from Italy. Italy. Nashville, Italy, in fact. Nashville, Italy. And this is Little Guido? That's Little Guido with Big Fido. Okay. Hey, Little Guido just went, hey, right to you. You get out of here. You get out of here. Man, I would have fucking done anything to be at this show. This was Wait, driving where distance. was it? Where was it in Georgia? Cobb County. Oh, Cobb County Civic Center. What's wrong with that? Well, I, I'm, I'm, I don't, nothing wrong with it. I don't know why you didn't come across the line and watch it. I, I mean, you were such a big mark. You should have driven. I was 16. Well, that shit. Parents wouldn't let me leave. Huh? Parents wouldn't let me leave. Okay, here we go. Uh, Blue Meanie, one of our favorites. Oh, one of the best. One of the best guys ever. And look at the crowd. They're hot for him. And he is uh, wrestling as uh, with Supernova, who's dressing up as a Blue Meanie as well. Supernova uh, tried his hand at mortgage banking, and now I think he's just a regular ass banker hmm. somewhere in Kentucky. I think you could probably send him an email like Nova at regular ass banker. You know what I remember about the Cobb County Civic Center? You got a, a bloge in the parking lot once you told me about No, no, no. Parking lot panties. No. Okay. We were, we were doing a taping of WCW Saturday night there, a, a WCW taping. And it was my last show before I was going off to the WWE. Mm. And I was so excited that night to be leaving. I remember walking out that door. I remember distinctly walking out the back door there thinking, I'll never see these motherfuckers again. <laughs> never say never kids, especially in pro wrestling. That's what I remember about it. I like it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, a kind of a different look. I mean, really than your, your regular ECW arena, obviously, but I'm digging this, you know, and of course you and I have, uh, certainly, uh, gotten a, uh, a well-found respect and love for Tommy rich in the last couple of years. Without question. He came to our low key, big hog event a year ago, uh, and, uh, was just a, a hit and has been our friend and a good guy since then. And I do need to say this. And most of you low key, big hogs who were there know this to be a fact that as, uh, much as Conrad Thompson would try to get it out of him. Tommy Rich would n never give in to innuendo and rumor. No, he would not talk about breaking Missy in when she was underage with uh, a hand towel in mm -hmm. his front seat of his car. He wouldn't, he wouldn't talk about that. He also wouldn't talk about the legend that he used to dip his balls in peroxide to breathe, mm -hmm. to bleach his uh, sack meat hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he uh, wouldn't, yeah, he wouldn't confirm any of that stuff. And that well, there you go. One of the boys, I ain't talk, I don't know shit, <laughs> but I do thank you and Tony for bringing me in and paying me. I do, but I don't know nothing. <laughs> Y'all need me to throw some fake punches. I'm good for it. 
we went to the. Somebody say something about lasagna. lasagna. <laughs> we went to that comedy club that night, and the opening act, that oh. girl was performing. She was doing her best, and Tommy she was, was doing. Yeah. Her. God damn! Tommy. I didn't know they had curtain jerkers in comedy. <laughs> he said, "Hey, Tony." We would have done a lot better just to stay over at the hotel and drink beer. We'd have saved a whole lot of money. We'd have had more laughs. <laughs> it killed me. And Cassio loves him too. So, man, Tommy Rich is one of our favorites. And, hey, what do you know about the health of Tracy Smothers? I know it's- that uh, they're doing a go- Chris Hero is doing a GoFundMe for him right now. Mm-hmm. By the way, I feel like we should mention, do you know one of the big uh, chants for FBI? No. Where's my pizza? <laughs> and they would also do, um, well, lots of, lots of, yeah. Lots of things to disparage the good Italian names. No, just other mm, situations okay. that maybe they shouldn't have been joking about. Yeah. Uh, okay. My, like mafia stuff. Well, they would just chant like you suck dick and things like that. Oh, not like your grandma has a mustache or anything like that. No, I mean, more like you suck dick and things like that. Or she's okay. a crack whore. Okay. Got it. Uh, sweep it up, asshole. Sweep it up. Okay. How about this? Man, I don't know about that, Nova. I know you were the innovator of offense, but I don't know if a choke slam and then a, uh, an atomic dick, that those are, that those go together. Uh, Supernova is the innovator of offense. Yeah, he called himself that because okay. Tommy well, Dreamer good. called himself the innovator of violence. Well, he called himself the innovator of offense, but really it was probably Canyon. Yeah, he was. By the way, if Blue Mini can be a wrestler, I can be a wrestler. I can moonsault. Really? Yeah. Next time you come over, I'll, I'll do it in the pool for you. It's a little bit different doing it in the pool than it is on a mat, Conrad. No, I understand, but I'm saying the ability to turn your fat ass in midair. You know, when fat ass is fly, fat ass is fly. Okay. I love, I'm sure Paul e knows this. I love that you're trying to fucking convince me that a wrestling ring is not the same as a goddamn swimming pool. Like I'm that fucking, <laughs> come on. <laughs> well, they're both, I mean, there's a blue mat and this, the, the water in the pool's blue. So some dumbass may mistake it for it. First of all, I'm colorblind and you're showing off. And by the way, let's track it. To what Tracy Smothers just did, the dancing is purely coincidental, I assure you. This is too much. Referee John Finnegan now in the center of the ring. Perhaps he's going to put a stop to. Tony, what do you think about in the middle of a match having a dance off that includes the referee? I'm just so glad that when the blue meanie was doing his dance, that his nuts didn't go flopping out of his George there because it, it looked like it came very close. Were you really looking for him? Uh, you just never, I mean, I was saw him dance. I'm thinking, uh Oh, them George, are very shorts. So you're, you're like a passionate hog watcher. No, I'm not a passionate hog watcher. I, I'm just a hog watcher, hog watcher. I'm just, uh, just concerned about my fellow man here. Look at the referee. All right, so the referee just body slammed Tracy Smothers. Where are you at on this? Now, <laughs> now Guido gets one. Why not? <laughs> Fans love it, right? Why not? I'm for all that silly stuff. Look at the crowd, by the way. It'd be easy for us to shit on it, but look at the crowd. Oh, I know. I know it goes, it goes down to this Conrad. And I know there's a lot of old school guys out there. I get it. Where are they at? Well, I don't know where they are. They're not listening to us, but there's a lot of old school guys out there, but I'm just for being entertained, right? Sure. Being entertained. And if that means something silly, that means something nutty. If that means something crazy, then by golly, let's do it. I've always been that always been that way. Give you a perfect example. I'm listening. Do you see the latest bubbly bunch? Yeah. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I thought that was very entertaining. Yeah. I liked it two weeks ago when I saw it on TV. Yeah. But you see the one where like even Kevin Smith and Jason Mews and all of them took a bump. Yeah. I'm, I'm being a smart ass about the don't rush thing. 
that WWE did that AEW borrowed there. It was tremendous because you had like mainstream celebrities and Mm -hmm. I was shocked with several of the folks you guys got involved. I'm just trying to take the piss out of you right now and piss you off and it's not working. No, it's not. Yes, I loved it. Because I don't know what the WWE is doing. I don't care what they're doing. I'm not watching them. The only thing concerns me about the WWE is I want them, like us, like Impact, like everybody else, to be able to get back in front of full houses again. Well, Impact hadn't been in front of full houses in a long time. Theoretically. I'm busting balls, by the way. Why does nobody give Impact any respect? That's a real question. You know, it's recently been brought to everyone's attention. I think it was Mike Elgin who said, Dave Meltzer should cover cover impact. And I was like, he does. And I started looking, I was like, well, not really. (laughs) I don't don't really know why. Like, Mm. and again, I'm not picking on Dave here. I'm just saying, it doesn't feel like you, they're ever really in the conversation unless there's something really new, uh, newsworthy, like, oh, Tessa's the the men's champ now, or Mm. Tessa said this or that. I mean, if it's some sort of major positive, negative news you you hear about it you know whether well, who, positive, who writes their tv for them who's their scott demore and uh, uh cyrus the virus okay well don, good luck to him don callus don right. calais why do you keep calling him calais it just sounds more but that's not his name well my name's not skiabon either but it never stopped a couple of people so they're one, two, and three. No, only a two count. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of other wrestling promotions. There's Impact. There's Ring of Honor. There's MLW. There's NWA. I want to see all of them prosper. If wrestling is hot, then it's good for all of us, I think. Right. I've always felt that way, so I have no ill will towards anybody. You at times, Dave Silva at times, what? Matt Coon always. But other than that, no, no. Ill. Well, Tracy Smothers could do a lot of good stuff. And here's the thing. You never had a reason to be mad at me. You're just, no, a, you're mm-hmm. just a woman. No, I, 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 no, I just, I've never had a reason to be mad at you, but that's never stopped me before. No, I know. That's what being married all these years gets you. I'm not married to you, you motherfucker. Uh, no, it just gets you a chip on your shoulder about everything. It gets you surly about life. You say, oh, look at that front face pancake. You're getting excited about calling wrestling, I can tell. Yeah. Why don't you call it with your mouth hole? No, I don't know. I, I get paid to do that for a living. Well, you're getting paid for this. I don't know. If you I know. know. Whoa, look at Blue Mini. I'd love to see Blue Meanie and Conrad Thompson in a moonsault contest. Oh, it'll happen. <laughs> Meanie, I know you're listening. Let's make wow. it happen. It's not like we can do it in front of a crowd, so we'll do it in my pool. <laughs> Bring the wife down, spend the weekend. <laughs> we'll order food because we can't go out. Mm-hmm. But I know where the good eating is, Meanie. You can trust me. Mm. Restaurants are not restaurants are not open yet in uh, Huntsville. No, of course not. Mm. We're real. We're like decent civilized. No, you yeah. Right. Watch out. Somebody say something about big guy up top. Oh, got, oh my God. Look at this. Kaplunk. Fudge. Holy shit. Has an earthquake here, Conrad, a goddamn earthquake. Somebody, somebody throwing that at Italian flag from Italy. Look at the referee just run to the wrong corner to, and like <laughs> yeah. he can't see, but then he does see. And we'll yeah, I got to throw it out. And that's ECW, baby. He just uh, body, guess you can. He body slammed these fuckers earlier. One, two, three. That's it. Blue meanie. And let's, uh, run, let's run through this. The FBI with the baby faces here. They were the goddamn referee body slammed them. <laughs> the fix was in VWO or cheaters. That's all there is to it. You hear me? Yeah. Always got to pick on the Italians. By the way, that match got half a star. They went nine minutes and 27 seconds. It's an unannounced match. Unannounced. Unannounced. Hmm. Meaning they didn't advertise it. I, I know. Meaning, I wonder why they were afraid well, to scare ECW people off. You was trying to just slide stuff in. They, they'd sell their pay-per-view on like, you know, four or five matches and then just fill it in. Hmm. How about a one hundred five fifty in the front row? 
What, is that what he paid for the ticket? That's what I'd pay for a, a pass to Tammy Stitch's OnlyFans. But um, did you see? Uh, did you see your boy Jr. a couple weeks ago promoting Sonny's back and got an OnlyFans? No. Track it tonight. It's truly a battle for the ages, as just incredible takes on the man who ruined his undefeated streak at the 1997 November to Remember, Mikey Whipwreck, who then scored another pinfall victory the very next night in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But then, December 13th, Mikey's chronic knee injury flares up again in his hometown of Buffalo, New York, and just incredible would take Mikey Whipwreck out. Marietta, Georgia. It's a good old fashioned grudge match here live on pay per view. Tells the story nicely, does it not? Yeah, it sure does. Very well done. Done. Dun, 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 dun. Who the hell? What the hell? Who's the girl on the right without a bra on? Oh, gosh. Are you getting excited? I think we've seen her before. You have. How about on the left? That's Ronnie. But the girl is a lady named Chastity. Right. Are yeah. you familiar with uh, a fella named Jules Jordan? No. Jules Jordan was a pornographer. I guess he okay. still is. R this guy, Ronnie, looks like a swolt up uh, Chavo Guerrero. No, that's not Ronnie, baby. No, that's not? No. That's okay. Jason. Jason Ronnie from Atlas walked him to the ring, but he had, Oh yes. My, our buddy fat. Ronnie. I got you now. Okay. Right. Got anyway, me. can we talk about Jules Jordan? Well, oh, yeah, I, I guess we can. He's a big pornographer. Oh, well, good for him. And he started in New Jersey, but then moved to California and became a millionaire hmm. just like Jed and the Clampets. But along the way, he had to meet a couple of girls who were willing to, uh, hmm. on camera for him. And lady in the ring her wrestling name is chastity and she performed an act of fellatio with another woman on mr jordan for mm -hmm. a movie called live bait that uh was really the springboard for mr jordan to move to california and become a millionaire mm -hmm. so, he, so that par he parlayed the chastity beige video mm -hmm. into a whole empire so that red sign that we see is really apropos uh what does it say well, we, there it is on the right. You see it? Mm. Well, she did once, but you know what? Once you've done it once. I mean, that's what they used to tell you in high school. It's what I heard. Well, my big one was she's done it for less. <laughs> okay. Just incredible. Great performer as well. They had, uh, and that's, that's what made ECW so great. Well, there Mikey Whipwreck didn't even wait, did he? Slipping just, in. Just stormed to the ring. Whoa, how about a spear? I need you to get a shirt, bandana combination like that, and do your grocery shopping down at the Whole Foods dressed like that. Call yourself have, Tony, Tony Whipwreck. We haven't gone to Whole Foods in quite a while. Do you have one in uh, Huntsville? Of course we do. You think we're heathens? Yes. Oh, we're well, right. By the way, I feel like while we're waiting right now, cause you ain't got shit to say or whatever, that we should talk about 
uh, next week's episode. I've got a sneeze. It's going to be from May 19th, 2003. It's Flair's last <laughs> title shot. Not really, but it's real close to his last title shot. It's called a night in Greenville. It's him challenging triple H the night after a pay-per-view really a remarkable show. I think you're going to dig it. It's from May of 2003. Yeah. I said that while you were sneezing. Okay. Uh, but it's going to be a good time. We're looking forward to that. The following week. It's uh, Flair's funeral for May of 2000, the 22nd wow. to be exact. And then okay. we'll finish out the month of May with your, your soul TNA appearance. Dun, 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 dun. And we'll get to play that. We'll get to track it and I get to listen to it. Track it. And I get to listen to Mike Tanay shit on me. Some bitch. Ooh. Ooh, Russian leg sweep back of the head. Fuck. That's no rough. way to work that move guys. That's rough doing right there. That is man. Mikey was a good kid when he worked for us. I liked him a lot. Really? Oh yeah, I did. I got along with Mikey. Well, he told me he didn't, he didn't think he cared for him. Well, there you go. You just never know, huh? You never know how people feel. He told me that the only person what? he knew that hated him more than you was Taz. <laughs> well, Taz and I, are, Taz and I are buddies, you know? And I said, well, why, why would Taz hate you? Well, he made me. Oh, oh okay. He may have been the first person who told me Taz is only mad when he's awake. <laughs> if you meet him when he's asleep, it's great. <laughs> we probably didn't say that at all. No, I made that but all that's time. funny. I didn't know. It, it just shows you what I know. Here's which is nothing. I didn't know. And of course I was living in Cobb County at the time, right? This is May 3rd, 1998. You were probably at the bed, bath and beyond. I could have been because I had no idea that they were in this at the Cobb County civic center. I mean, if, if rumor went around, Hey, Oh, by the way, ECW's here in Georgia. Didn't cut, didn't get to me. Don't remember it. Well, you're hurtful sometimes. No, I'm, I'm being honest. I, I, I don't remember it. And I, I, you know what? Wouldn't have shown up anyway, but your boy, here's what he wrote. Okay. Paul Heyman and ECW attempted to book their own version of that ending scene with a memorable emotion filled gutsy performance that people would remember climaxing with both wrestlers being carried on the shoulders of other wrestlers. It was a nice story, but the wrestle Palooza pay-per-view from a wrestling standpoint was among the worst pay-per-view in years. Ooh. Although every match had a few hot moves and ended up raising the question if ECW will ever be able to come close to the standard it set on its first pay-per-view outing ECW, the American derivative of FMW inspired garbage wrestling took the term garbage to a more liberal meaning on the May 3rd Cobb County civic center in Atlanta suburb of Marietta, Georgia, before a sellout crowd of 3,401 fans, approximately 2,900 paying a gate of 72 grand merchandise sales were reported as a company record of 55,000 which would be $18 and 97 cents per paying customer, which would be the largest per cap figure in the history of American pro wrestling. There's a little hmm. to say good about this show. Other than the risks taken by the wrestlers were extreme and the effort displayed was greater than most of the pay-per-views from the major offices. So he's not a big fan. And, and he says specifically a few other notes, the Cobb County civic center, for some reason, and I don't know if it's the lighting or the basketball hoops or what it looks Bush league. Heyman noted numerous problems working with the building and setting up production. It looked Bush league when WCW taped TV there years ago, and it looks exactly the same today. Joey styles desperately needs help on commentary. Basically anyone in wrestling would be better at this job than him, except Tony Schiavone. We know he's the shits. <laughs> Granted, it's tough when the excitement isn't there and your job is to sell matches that aren't working. And Lord knows we can't, we know that Tony Schiavone can't do it unless he's promising us every week that it's the greatest night in the history of our great sport. But how many times can we hear that about a goddamn glacier match? But the one man show doesn't work on pay per view. I sure as shit hope WCW never tries this with Tony Schiavone. Apparently, Heyman spent $3,000 on heads to pass out to the fans for this show alone to give Al Snow the hot ring entrance. So most of what I just read is true and exactly mm -hmm. what was written in the observer. A couple of those lines, maybe dollar figures for Al Snow's heads. I don't recall mm -hmm. exactly. I'm mm -hmm. freestyled. 
Hmm. Well, uh, be pretty accurate on a lot of things there. So you think it looks Bush League? Yeah, I always thought the Cobb County Civic Center did look like Bush. It looked like a high school gym, which is kind of like what the Cobb County Civic Center is. It's a uh, it's a big high school gym. That's all. Now they've gone through a lot of uh, reconstruction and remodeling since then, but it never looked good. And there was a time in uh, WCW, and this was an Ole Anderson was booking. There was a time that we worked, we did two weeks in the Gainesville Civic Center, two weeks in Cobb County, just to save money. How about Mikey threw that chair at Just Incredible? Mm. It flew off of Just Incredible's head and hit a fan behind him in the head. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. How about a superplex off the rail mm. through the table on the floor? Oh, my God. Lois has arrived, by the way. Oh, hey, Lois. Conrad says, Hey, Hey, Conrad. Well, here's Pippin's treats. I don't know where he is. He's right here up on the desk with me. Oh, what do you get up here for? Oh, Jesus. Jesus. <sighs> Welcome to my world, Conrad. Well, how y'all doing? We're doing great. I wasn't We're talking healthy. to you. Yeah. Well, the lights in the backyard won't go on or off. Okay. I'll work on that. All right. All right. Love you. Good night. Good night. Well, hang, on. hang on. Hang on. If, if they won't go cool. off, are they off or are they on? I don't know. You realize what she just said is impossible? They won't yeah. go off or on? They'll definitely go one or the other. I, I, I don't know what you heard, but here's what I heard. That's what I heard. I bet if Whitney asked you to fix the lights out back, he would. I'd, I'd unplug us right now and run back there. Yeah, you would have said, Connor, we got to take a break. There's no way I'm going to make my baby wait another two hours and 14 minutes. <laughs> well, brought her name up early here. Didn't you? Who your wife? Well, Lois? No, you didn't. No, no, Whitney. Oh, Whitney. Who? No, never mind. Oh boy. Covering. What well, do you think he, if you lived with Whitney, do you think you get so bored? You count the hairs. Like during quarantine, I mean, would you count the hairs? I don't think so. Let me ask you here. Uh, what did this match get? Cause they, this guy's working pretty hard here. Well, you gotta remember he hates ECW. Okay. So he gets two stars. Okay. He hated EC. I didn't realize he hated ECW. I, oh, I, yeah. He's shown on it all the time. Okay. He's a big shitter on ECW. Hmm. So you wouldn't count the hair. So I'm just trying to, no, uh, no, of course I wouldn't. Okay. I mean, you just said you'd follow around like a lap dog and blah, blah, blah. So I, just... I, I don't remember saying that, but if you think I said that, that's fine. Okay. I, I probably made it up. Hmm. These guys should, I don't, this is not that bad of a match, man. They, these guys are, that's the, that's the compliment they were looking for. Not that bad. No, it's not. These guys are working pretty hard. Watch out. Watch out now. Come this on. is about to pick up. Come on. Those things go. Those things got to go in a fallout. Yeah, they do. They're going to have to fall out. Yeah, let's see them. Holy snakes and moly. She's going to take this bump. Oh. All right. It's a little bit better bump than I anticipated for her. Man, I I got to tell you, I was researching something and I was just bullshitting. I didn't know there was actually a lady in the ring. <laughs> you did. I got to quit doing research while we're doing this. Oh, I was looking for something and oh, here we go. Teasing the tombstone on the chis air. Mm, no. Nope. And oh. that's got to be it. That is it. Just incredible wins. See, he's not just the coolest. He's not just <laughs> the best. He's, He's just, just incredible. In, yes, I got that. All right, so uh, not much for this match, but I certainly did enjoy it. And now we're going to have Landstorm, Chris Candido teaming together. That's got to be a good one, man. Taking on balls and axles. It's got a weird start, but I think you'll like it. By the way, check out in the second row. Uh, a little homage to the front row of the real ECW arena with the Hawaiian shirt and straw hat. 
Huh, yeah, how about that? One of my best friends at the time was in the crowd. I gotta find him. So he his parents let him go, wouldn't let you go. He was older than me. He lived nope. in Dalton, Georgia. <laughs> All right. I had friends beyond my neighborhood. That was a thing in the nineties. Mm -hmm. There was here. Look at this. Take a look at this chair or this table shot again. Make sure you get it right. Kids. <laughs> Why is all this on the replay? I have no idea. They're just doing replays on the fly. I'm Joey styles and I'm done with wrestling. Mm. Or what, what's Axel saying? Track it. Oh, fuck. That's something we want to talk about. We're sick and tired of Chris Candido and Lance Storm. They're ducking us, and they know they can't handle it. And right here on Wrestlepalooza, hey, Candido, everybody knows you're a pussy-whipped little sissy. And Lance Storm, you may be one hell of an athlete, but you don't have what it takes against these hardcore chair-swinging freaks. We want it now. We took them to the limit. I beat their ass by myself and Candido in the ECW arena. I put you down for a one, two, three. Tonight right here in the Cobb County Civic Center, the waiting time is over. You hit the music on those two little so-called champions and we're gonna rip them a new ass tonight. Right here, get them out here, come on. Well, I guess we're gonna have the World Tag Team title matchup now. Right now, get them in the ring, let's go. So here we go. Mm hmm. By the way, wow. do these two guys look like wrestlers or what? They do, and the other two guys don't. I'm just saying. Mm. These guys no, they look did. like they wrestlers. Did. Yeah. Didn't, uh, wasn't recently the, uh, the anniversary of the death of Chris Candido? Yeah, last week. Yeah. I blamed you for that. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Just terrible tragedy. Well, I mean, everybody knows that Shivani invented clots. <laughs> you know, like Butch Reed discovered Netflix. Mm -hmm. You discovered clots. Mm. Exactly. How about that? Strutting out. Strutting out around you. Don't never do that, son. That's a world championship match. Matt belt title. Can't say belt. Can we? No, you're allowed to. It's ECW. Okay. This wasn't too far removed from Candido coming to WCW. Yeah, this was not his best patch here. Right. He and Lance Storm both. Lance so did Storm. they have like, uh, was the storyline here? They had a little friction between them as champs. They're part of the triple threat. Okay. And who would the third part of the triple threat be? Shane Douglas. Oh, okay. There you go. And before Lance Storm, it was bam, bam. And bam, before, bam, Bigelow. Before that, I think it was Ben Juan Malenko. Okay. I maybe made some of that up. It doesn't matter. Yeah, well. How about the ICP face paint across from the hard cam? Wow. I did. Uh, yeah. How about that? I mean, there's two of them. Yeah, I see the other one now. Shaggy Two Dope. Yeah, can't believe you know that. Yeah, I do know that. What's the other one's name? Give me a dollar. Don't Google. Uh, you give me a dollar. Okay. Uh, Three, two, one. I don't remember. Violent J. Violent J and Shaggy Two Dope. Hmm. Man. What's the? Uh, is it? What, is it taking like the balls and Axel? Uh, a couple of uh, years to get down here and do this match. What's yeah. going on? Here? Yeah. 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 <laughs> By the way, they're going to get a ton of time here. 12 minutes and four seconds. It gets half a star. <laughs> okay. And this is going to be after they, it's going to be 12 after they started wrestling. Look, they said, get their ass down here. Let's have a match. And they're still up on the balcony. I mean, what the fuck is going on? I have no idea. Come on. This is pretty shitty, actually. Very shitty. Mm. Let's, let's track it. So they're playing Balls music. Are you okay. familiar with Balls music? Uh, balls music? Yeah. No, I've never heard. Uh, what, what about Balls music? So you don't know about this? I don't know about Balls music, no. It's, it's called Big Balls. It's 
It's from AC. Big balls. It's okay. AC DC. You never heard of this? Oh, okay. But uh, they can't play that. that okay, ring got it. We can't we can't play that on the network. We can't play that. You don't have to tell me what we can do and not do. Yeah, anymore. I'm telling you you can't play it if you want to make some money. I, I, I know how many seconds we got. Okay, got well then the you've you've used them up. No, I used eleven. All right. Why don't you eat my dick, Anthony? <laughs> You thought about that? Maybe you can just eat my dick. <laughs> Boy, you in a surly mood here. No, I'm just tired of doing all the heavy lifting. No, you're not doing the heavy lifting. You want to track this? Track it. Well, yeah, let's hear what the goddamn Chris Candido had to say. But uh, hold on a second. If you guys want a title match, let's do it properly. I think you want to introduce these guys like proper challenges. They got an intro. They have to introduce them. They have to. What do you think now, huh? What do you think you're going to do? Ladies and gentlemen, introducing at this time the challengers. At a combined weight of over 650 pounds, Balls Mahoney and Axel Rotten! All right, there's some bullshit here. So stop tracking it now, Dan. Yeah, please. That's some okay. bullshit here, man. This they've if I don't if this match goes twelve minutes, they've gone twelve minutes now since the time they've talked. Yeah, it's with Joey uh, Styles. Serious business. This is why yeah. they needed better agents. This is house show shit, but we're on pay per view. Mm-hmm. Who were the agents back then? Do you know who ECW agents were? Were did Paulie run everything? Is there a cricket sound machine? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there probably is. Yeah. I ain't got it. No, I didn't figure you'd be ready or prepared or whatever. No, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. not at all. I understand. It's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Thank God they finally hooked up. <laughs> there it is. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> They finally hooked up. Wow. That's what no one said about. Never mind. <laughs> you know, sadly, we've lost both the guys in the ring right now. Chris Candido passed away from a blood clot, as we talked about. And Axel uh, Rotten, he passed away uh, in the McDonald's bathroom. And oh, really? McDonald's bathroom? Yeah. Heroin overdose. A needle hanging oh. out of his arm. Oh, God. That is so sad. Are you moving? Mm-hmm. Okay, are, you, are you looking for my six man belt right now? I had to move my dog. I feel like you're the dead one. No, <laughs> that one's been cremated. Uh, no, I had to move bug. He was bugs and good for nothing. Sack of shit. <laughs> hey, you, don't you talk about my fucking dog. You motherfucker. Why'd you laugh when I said it? Here's what I know about bug. Don't you he, dare. He eats a lot. He sleeps a lot. He don't do nothing around the house. Actually, what he does do is not good. He's just shitting and pissing and wasting resources. <laughs> Ain't got no job. The only difference between him and Lois is Facebook. You're welcome. You all right? (laughs) 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 Oh, God. Oh. Where were we here? We're watching Balls Mahoney, Axel oh, Rotten going for the PN one, two, Lance oh, kicks out. <laughs> oh. oh, that was too much. <laughs> How can you be uh, mad at me for real? I mean, come on. Cracking these one liners out. You gotta be happy with me. That's the best one yet. And there have been some good ones. Okay, Chris Candido. <clears throat> 
<sighs> so, um, what, what, how many stars did this match get? I'll be trying to care now. Half a star, 12 minutes. Okay. Of I am trying to care because I want to have to talk to Taz about this. <laughs> <laughs> Taz is going to care a lot, a lot about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what your favorite part of this is going to be? No. Taz ain't on it. Hmm. He's not on it at all. Doesn't he? Then he, he's not going to wrestle, but he's going to make an appearance. Isn't he? Um, the original match was supposed to be Taz versus Chris Chetty. Okay. And it was canceled because Taz got hurt. Okay. So they replaced it with that mini Nova FBI match. Uh, okay. All right. So there is no Taz match. Okay. Well, there you go. Brother, I wasn't even there. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go to come down from Brooklyn to do no jobs, bro. Well, they gonna call me Jobber Jones. Jobber Jones. Wow. Look at, look at, uh, that was a hell, hell of a drop kick by a big guy. Balls Mahoney was in a weird shit, man. Yeah. Math, Satanism, things like that. Okay. Well, uh, smart me up. What is Satanism? Uh, Satanism is where you worship, uh, Satan. Oh, Satanism. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's... I thought you went, I thought you were talking about Saint Nism. <laughs> I've heard of St. Christopher, but not Satanism. Satanism. <laughs> He's in that old Satanism. No, he, <laughs> seriously, he would like uh, get hotel rooms from promoters for shows or whatever. And allegedly yeah. he would cut himself and bleed all over the walls on purpose. And oh my God, are you? St- yeah, there was apparently like a whole mess, but supposedly people say the same thing about Sabu that there's been just wrecked hotel rooms. I never met Sabu. I never met. I guess I did meet Sabu like in 04. Right. Uh, but I've never met Balls Mahoney or, but he's gone too, man. Balls is no longer with us. Axel's no longer with us. Candido's no longer with us. Uh, old clean living Lance Storm, he's still with us, but mm-hmm. not if us is WWE because they furloughed his ass as soon as he closed his school because, mm. you know, fuck. Well, hopefully he will land on his feet. Well, he will. He always did. Lance yeah. Storm. If he made a hundred thousand dollars this year working for ECW, he found a way to save one Oh five. It's probably right. Meanwhile, if Flair <clears throat> made a hundred thousand dollars a year wrestling, he found a way to only go in debt 30 grand. <laughs> these guys, this, uh, these, uh, these big guys, balls and axle doing some pretty good bumping. I'm not, I just like the last match. I'm not shitting on this match at all. I, it's not that bad. It's pretty darn good. That's what they're looking for, man. <clears throat> Not that bad. Yeah, yeah. If you're if you if you're going into a hey, show, hey, hey, look at this. Yeah, look at this. Chris Candido's short stature ass mm-hmm. just held a three hundred pound plus Axel Rotten straight up in a suplex and held him. That's remarkable. That is. Yes, sir. I like this team of Candido and. And Lance Storm. No wonder they went to WCW. These were good performers. I wonder if back in the day if Taz was ever offered anything from WCW. I got to need to ask him that. Yeah, he had an offer. Did he really? Yep. They offered him your spot on commentary. <laughs> Well, he apparently didn't take it, did he? Well, I think what he said is, I think that chair will work just right, brother. It's the right height. <laughs> Taller than everybody else. I'm a big star. Way bigger than that living legend, Larry Zabisco. Who'd he ever beat? <laughs> oh, God. So this is 98, and ECW closed its doors. Oh, when? And same as y'all. Two months before y'all, they, they went down in January of 01. Y'all okay. packed it in in March of 01. That, so you okay. lasted two, two months longer than ECW. That's where hmm. you are. ECW had 
This is obviously a pay-per-view, but they had a somewhat of a television network, did they? Did they have syndication? Yeah. I think were, I may have asked you this before. They bought time uh, across the country and mm-hmm. they had a tape trading service. And then in 99, in August, August 27th, 99, they started on TNN. Okay. Uh, but by 2000, they were already flirting with WWE and TNN got WWE and they just pretended ECW didn't exist anymore. Wow. And that was it. They went out of business. Do they just like let the contract run out, breach of contract said, you know, fuck them. We're just not going to carry them. I don't, you know. Yeah. Once WWE came, that was it. So they were out searching for a new TV deal. Couldn't find a TV deal and couldn't pay their debts and meet their payroll. So they were done. Mm. Not unlike WCW at the end, Mm -hmm. you know, y'all had done such bad TV for so long that nobody wanted anything to do with wrestling anymore. Right. I mean, the WWF was still on fire, but you guys were so anemic and so terrible at everything that it just poisoned all of television for every other wrestling promotion, even someone as awesome as ECW. Mm. So you're blaming us for that too, right? Oh, a hundred percent. Not that I mean, obviously they're having a five-star fucking match here and this is a five-star fucking pay-per-view. This is not their fault. It's our fault because they just happened to be in Georgia in the same County, the same County where WCW had its headquarters. Well, this is sold out just so you know. Okay. Yeah, boy. Yeah. So yeah, it's sold out, but the event sucks. Oh, so y'all, y'all were doing better stuff at the end of WCW. No, it, but we were doing better stuff in 98. Not much, but better stuff. Yeah. Like when you beat Goldberg, that was a good thing. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Watch out. So help me understand. What about this show? Don't you like since you're shitting? On I like this show. Well, you said it wasn't good. You said the event sucked. I'm going by what Dave Meltzer was saying. Now you've told me before Dave Meltzer don't know shit. I Dave's my buddy. Well, hang on now. You shit on him all the time and say, that I don't care. shit on Dave Meltzer all the time. You got, you got to see you a lie by the way, <laughs> low <schools.com. laughs> No, listen, I love Dave Meltzer. You know, that I've been subscribing since 1997, but you have said, well, we have a whole rap song about you shitting on Dave. I'll play it. If you push now, nah, you don't need to play it. It's it's in the archives on Patreon. It is. Patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. Anyway, the point is, okay. You, um, no, the point is this, that you're blaming us for everything or me for everything. And you shouldn't. Why shouldn't I? Oh, look at there. How about Sonny? Oh my God. She going to take a bump. Oh my God. I hope not. Roll out girl. Yeah. No, oh, there you go. They go lose their tag team belts because of Sonny. I hope not. No, there you go. A couple nut shots. <laughs> when was the last time you got kicked in the ding dong? Uh, I can't remember. Free Ric Flair. Woo. <laughs> Did you see that sign? <laughs> that orange sign in the front. Yep. I don't get it. Free Ric Flair. What do you mean? You don't get it. it Whoa. How about that? How about that missile drop kick, buddy? Fuck Rob Van Dam. That's Lance. Goddamn storm. Damn right. It is. How about Candido wants the pin? <laughs> wow. How tremendous is that? That's good. That's, that's a good finish. That's a pretty cool finish. Even if you don't get the pinfall, you still go home feeling like a winner. If she's walking out with you. Mm-hmm. And Candido walks out with both belts. Wow. No, maybe not. Fight on back to the dressing room, guys. Come on now. Keep on going. Turn around. There you go. One more. And Lance Storm will walk with the belts. There you go. The the good vet, good finish, guys. Good finish. I'll give that a, I'll give that match, say two and a half, three stars. What about you? Oh, I'm not going three. Okay. Two and a half then. Here we go. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. Professional wrestling, especially those from right here in Georgia. First, I'd like to introduce a former North American heavyweight champion. 
former Mid-South Heavyweight Champion, former Mid-South Six-Man Tag Team Champion. I mean, so extreme, he once wrestled blinded in a dog collar match inside of a steel cage. Give it up for the big thump. That's awesome. You know, uh, loved bullet Bob Armstrong really did. He looks pretty good here too. Doesn't he? He's in great shape, man. Best shape of anybody being called out there. <laughs> That's right. But my fandom, uh, when mass superstar came out really popped on that because I didn't, uh, you know, I got to know Bill Eadie later, but man, I can remember the old mid Atlantic days. He was big time star in mid Atlantic championship wrestling. Programs with uh, Professor Malenko was his manager, and it's crazy just, to think, dude, that JYD was dead less than a month after this. Yeah, it's terrible. I, I love it when you when you honor the former stars. Absolutely, I do. I can't get enough of it. It's like what we do here on this show, you know, me honoring you every week. Thank you very much, Conrad. I appreciate that. Joey's not done, apparently. Are you ready for what's next? Yeah, I guess I am. Shane Douglas, baby. Shane Douglas. Yeah. I thought Shane Douglas comes out at the end of the night. He's in the main event, but he's the world champ. Oh, so he can come out anytime he wants to. And you know, if he's coming out, you know what that means. That means Francine's coming out. Dun, dun, dun. Come on, but Shane, move out of the way. Where? She's not here. She didn't make it to Georgia. 
What do you think of that belt? That's a pretty good looking belt, isn't I it? I love it. Yeah. They gave, uh, let's track it. I have been in this sport for 16 years, and I started when wrestling was still wrestling, and they didn't call it an entertainment. They called it a sport. And I was there when I saw the older generation wrestle with injury after injury. And I've also seen punks in the business today that are on guaranteed contracts, stub a toe and take six months off and still collect a paycheck. In my book, that's a bunch of shit. I was in a place called the World Wrestling Federation. And there was a time when I was supposed to stretch Shawn Michaels, but he had a little bump on his head, and instead the pussy walked out to the ring and handed me a belt. And it was at that minute I knew the WWE Intercontinental Belt meant shit in this sport. Right down the road is CNN Center. And they got a guy that wrestles in that company by the name of Dick Flair. And he sucks Bischoff's ass. I've called his old ass out for four years now, and I know he ain't coming. I wish he would, and you can boo me on your wife, because I don't like the old son of a bitch. I have two fractured bones in my elbow, a fractured palate, and a fractured cheekbone. And I plan on coming out here tonight and give me a wrestling match of a lifetime because it may be a last wrestling match in my career. But one thing you all will witness, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, you will tell your kids and your grandkids and your great, great grandkids that you watched a great athlete named the franchise and he was the greatest world's heavyweight champion of all time, no matter what happened at Wrestlepalooza. Tim walking the TV on Wednesday after he heard all the shit you've been talking. Woohoo! Bring him out, baby. Shut the music. Hey, this company's trying to paint you as this big hero, this big fighting champion, because you're wrestling hurt. Well, brother, instead of coming out here and whining and crying, why don't you tell these people the truth? Tell them who busted your arm. Tell them who busted up that pretty face of yours. So the way I see it, I am the uncrowned world heavyweight champion. You think you deserve this belt, Tash? Sit down and shut the fuck up. Brother, 
In Florida not too long ago, I snapped that skinny arm of yours, and I'm going to tell you what. There ain't going to be no main event called Al Snow versus Shane Douglas. You see, brother, just like that kid in the WWE handed over that belt to you, I ain't going anywhere until you hand that belt over to me. You see, you see, yeah, you can stick that up your ass, brother. I'll tell you what. I am here to ruin this pay-per-view, and I'm going to ruin you. Now hand it over. Just step your ass out of the way. I got out snow to worry about. Get the fuck out of the way. I'm going to the dressing room. You want it? You want this match tonight, Taz? If you're asking for an ass kicking... What do you think, Skivone? Tap out, baby. Tap out, tap out in a minute. That's my man. Man, I loved it. So now now Taz was supposed to wrestle but couldn't. Is that what that's the yeah. story here? That's right. Taz is injured, but they wanted to put him on pay per view and give him something mm-hmm. to do. And <laughs> Meltzer even said that segment was the best on the show. Yeah. That well, here comes Bam Bam. Holy shit. That was a good segment. And uh your hot spot's coming. Okay, great. It's a pretty good high spot anyway, man. Wait a minute. My high spot like in New Jack jumping off the balcony? No, better. Oh, oh, okay. Atlas Security, man. Still uh, breaking necks and cashing checks. Yes, they are. 22 years later. What are they going to do? A handcuff his ass? Yeah. That's pretty cool. A good segment. All right. Can't wait to see what Bam Bam and New Jack have for us. Why would you assume Bam Bam and New Jack are next? Well, that's what it says here on the list of matches. Oh, you're right, but you're giving spoilers. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I just hey. busting balls. Hey, take a look. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Oh God. He had his head right between her boobs. That's it. Come on, get another shot. Oh, there you go. Must <laughs> huh. be a special police car they put him in. Unmarked. <laughs> what? How about that shit? That's good. Very fucking cool. You ever kick out a window of a car like that? No, uh, no, no. You ever Did, do a- I look like a type of guy that would kick out a window of a car? You're like a, gr- a type of guy who would lock a girl in the back seat and she'd have to kick her window out. <laughs> no, I uh, nothing close to that. What's the worst you ever had a girl do to your car? She key your car, cut your tire, break your no, mirror. No, no. I was always a nice guy. Oh, you weren't slinging no hammers. I got you. What? If you sling them hammers, they do weird shit to your cars. When you no, well, cut them loose, you put them back in the no, water. If you know how to treat a girl, they'll never do that to you. Yeah. Tell us about everything with Lois or whatever. <laughs> you talking about the lady that's always on Facebook? No, I don't know. I mean, it's your wife. I thought. You had all figured out. You were going to coach us up, you know? Oh, all right. Well, there goes Francine. Why are you looking at her? You're married. Whoa, man. They opened him up. His palate's broken legitimately. Oh, really? That's a shooting uh, injury, yeah. huh? Yeah, he's he's in bad shape. He should definitely not be wrestling. Hmm. I heard him say palate broken. You know, I thought, well, oh, just a. I think, he, I think going into this, it was like his shoulders, knees, head, toes. Elbows, hips, pallets, patellas, <laughs> forearm, 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 <laughs> forearm. <laughs> I mean, here's the deal. If we knew his, his dick was broke, we'd know what to tell him to do. You know, bleachy.com or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
here she comes just a walking down the street. It's a new Ajaka. Nah, 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 nah. Come on, bring it on out. How about super dance? Eric Bischoff said, oh, I'd take one of those guitar shots all day. They don't hurt. He um, said that. And I'm like, well, that's because they're gimmick boss of guitars. He's like, no, they're no different than regular guitars. I don't mean to spoil the illusion, but no, there's just nothing to it. And I'm like, well, it hurt macho man. And it's the reason Jake says he got addicted to opioids. He's like, nah, he just said that. Cause he's on drugs or whatever, but, uh, no, you can hit, really believes that you can hit me with guitars. I'm like, okay, so let's run through this <laughs> at Starcast five, which is going to happen as soon as the world comes back together in 2027. Well, really good. I'm glad to hear that. Well, I mean, goddamn, I got all this talent. I can get there now that WWE's cut everybody, you know? <laughs> so, so my point is, um, Eric Bischoff agreed to let fans hit him over the head with guitars for money. No. Are you really? Yeah. Pretty excited about it. <laughs> Boy, some of the boys are lined up for that. Well, I figure it's a hundred dollars a whack. Wow. Plus you buy the guitar and Eric gets 25 and you get 75, right? Well, I'll let Eric keep all the money. <laughs> you just want to see it happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh God. Although I do worry if I let him do it, how long would his answers on our show be then? <laughs> Cause sometimes I don't mind telling you, I could say, man, on this third week of may, 1998, the rating was up a 10th of a point. What would you attribute that at? I could literally take my headphones off, go in the kitchen, <laughs> turn on the fucking gas stove, go to the fridge, pull out some cheese, go to the pantry and get some bread, butter, both sides or whatever they do to grill cheese. <laughs> Throw the pan in there, come back in here after I flip it one time and say, yeah, go back, <laughs> finish the sandwich, cut it diagonally, put it on a paper plate, pour a sweet tea with new ice and a new cup, come back and say, are you sure that's how it went down? And then just <laughs> turn my mic off, lean back, eat my sandwich, drink my sweet tea and we're back. That's good. That's tremendous. You know, there's the old expression about you ask a guy what time it is. He tells you how to make a watch or wind right. watch or whatever. Mm -hmm. You ask Eric Bischoff what time it is. He flies to Geneva. <laughs> gives you commentary the whole way there. Yeah. And explains how this guy's making the watch to you and then flies all the way back. <sighs> now, you notice how when, when, uh, and, and I've noticed this before because we've seen new Jack matches before how the fans just kind of stand around waiting for something really bizarre to happen. What are they supposed to do, Tony? Well, I, it's like, it's almost like he brings in that trash can of all those gimmicks as, as if they're say, uh Oh, one of those things could fly towards us because this guy is out of control. What are they supposed to do? Just start going. I don't know what they're drag, supposed to do. Conrad. Drag, God damn it. Arm drag, arm drag, arm drag, collar and elbow. No, I, I wasn't talking about the wrestlers or some of the fans. It's just a, a different, you know, it's just like, it's almost as if they're standing and watching a car wreck. Well, they are. Here's the thing. These guys are roaming around and they're throwing people over the guardrail. They know that anytime something can happen, they're not standing like that, like assholes when they're in the ring. But when these guys are 400 pounds and they're no, doing some they were standing like that when they were in the ring, well, it's new Jack. They know that he's going to hit people over the head with things and those objects are going to fly into the crowd. Okay. But let me assure you, they weren't standing like that for FBI. No, no, they weren't. I mean, with new Jack, he's already, you've seen his thing. Oh, look at this out of the ring. He's, he's willing to murder people, right? He has murdered people. Not like look. kayfabe murder, like Katie Vick murder, but like shoot murder. Hmm. Katie Vick murder. We got to watch that one day. Yeah. Really? You think he ever try to wear it out in a coffin? <laughs> no, no. What don't if, like coffins. What if we did it on Patreon? No, no. I feel like I should mention, no. I pitched JR the other day mm. on mounting a GoPro to your dash. Oh, and really? Doing a little road trip. Yeah. And I told him that you would be, that you thought he'd be hesitant. Mm -hmm. because he might say some things and he said, mm -hmm. well, Connie, if I agreed to do it, I would also agree that I would be protected. I don't feel like I should have to say that when you ask me to do something. And then I say, yes, I feel like if I say something dumb that you'll look out for me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Jim, we've been on the air for over a year. He's like, that's a good point. Like, come so on, I'm going to take care of you, buddy. So he's agreed to do it. Yeah. 
He's in. I, I, he and I talked to I talked to him today, and I I was going to bring it up, but I was waiting for him to bring it up, and I didn't say anything. So I brought it up, and he said it was a great idea. He can't wait to do it. All right. So by the time you're hearing this, mm-hmm. uh, the pickup has already happened, but we're still <laughs> editing. Right. And that's going to be soon over at adfreeshows.com and mm-hmm. people are going to want to see this. This is what ride along from the WWE network was always supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Well, they got a good balcony here for the Jack. Jeez, what would you rather man. take the, uh, doomsday device? Where you sit on animal shoulder and hawk clotheslines you off the top, uh-huh. or lay on one of these tables while New Jack jumped off it on top of you. Boy, that's uh, that's a toss up there. How about Atlas Security's literally having to drag him up the stairs because he's hurt so bad? Jesus, they're pulling him. I'm like, come on, man! If you come on, you got to do your spot. Your We're gonna throw you off. Paul Lee wants you to jump. <laughs> That's just something. This is something to watch. Isn't it? <laughs> Guy being pulled to his spot. It's the best. Fuck, motherfuckers. He's got to have a concussion. Jump. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> the fucking guitar. That a fan handed him. Look at the security. Like, get the fuck away from here. Lord of mercy. Look at that Cobb County policeman. Like, what? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. He's, dude, they just threw a body off the balcony. He had to break his ankle. If he didn't break his ankle or, or turn his ankle or Jesus Christ, are they going to show that extreme replay? They got to Meltzer would write the match was built around a balcony dive and by God, the guy doing it was the guy was doing it dead or alive. And it wasn't <laughs> funny watching security literally dragging the passed out carcass of new Jack up the stairs into the balcony while back Bigelow had to ridiculously stand there forever and act like he was selling and groggy and kept looking at the balcony, waiting for new Jack to set up the spot. But Duke new Jack did leap off the balcony with a guitar shot and Bigelow juiced heavily and new Jack collapsed. And at this point was out cold to the point he didn't even recover until 20 minutes after the completion of the match, he was total dead weight and Bigelow had to lift him. Oh, here it is. Oh, Oh my God. How old is new Jack right now? In real, really, uh, in 2020, you mean? Yeah. In 2020. Uh, at he, this. he was born back in uh 63. So he's 57. Okay. So, so he's in his, yeah, he's in his fifties. Yeah. Sixties and seventies, not going to be too kind to him. I don't know. Yeah, so it just no. It's con- he, he walked into a punch supposedly. That's what knocked him out. Okay, this motherfucker's hurting for certain, son. Mm. Well, I was saying about concussions and shit like that, and you know, like fuck. So there's still a finish here. <laughs> what? Yeah, he's got to pick up the dead body. <laughs> I hope New Jack wasn't going over. <laughs> He ain't now. <laughs> he just he just gave him a a greetings from Asbury Park on his belly. Did you notice that? Meltzer said <laughs> Bigelow hit the greetings from Asbury Park and overprotected him to the point the move missed by a good eighteen inches and then yes. scored the pin. In some ways this was the worst ending of a match you'll ever see. But what are you gonna do trying to have a match continue when one guy is unconscious dud? He did his, uh, when he did that greetings from Asbury park, new Jack's head hit Bam Bam's belly. Well, listen, oh, God. props to Bigelow for taking yeah, care of him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bam Bam was a good kid, man. 
oddball, but a good kid. So he's, he's got the, so who am I going to fucking hit? Oh, with the trash can. <laughs> oh, for sure. Entertainment value. You can't beat this one. It may have been a dud, but <laughs> it's, Ram, it's going to go down as, uh, for the fans who were there. You remember that time that crazy motherfucker jumped off the balcony? Yeah, I was there. Hmm. So we're going to follow this with the Dudley boys against Dreamer and Sandman. Wow. Come on. Come on, baby. Got to be some more crazy shit going on. Wow. That was fucking tremendous. This that was match, tremendous. That match got a dud rating. The next one yeah. gets negative one star. Okay. Sabu <clears throat> and RVD after that get a star and a quarter. And the main <clears throat> event gets a star and a quarter. Okay. So you ready for some more shitty wrestling? Yeah. I'm hoping that, uh, that track it. Yeah. I want to hear the deadly stock. Well, they're not saying anything. It's just, no, crazy. they're just playing a bit, like a little music video. Trying to show them beating the shit out of Raven. Looks like mm, doing a pretty good job of it. That's Conan. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I hope, uh, I hope what's his name? Bubba Ray grabs a microphone. Did anybody get heat like that guy? Yeah, it was tremendous. He didn't give a shit. No, it didn't give a shit. <laughs> didn't give a shit. Like one of the heat wave shows, he's like, uh, yeah, you probably type of mom who teaches their daughter how to suck dick or something. <laughs> oh God. Did we go? No. Here we go. Well, well, well. <laughs> okay. Time to track it. Track it. Well, well, well. Before before you meet our opponents, the extreme alcoholic and his partner, the man with more TNA than a Las Vegas strip review, allow me to introduce you to my beautiful self, the quintessential stunt muffin, the object of your affection, the innovator of vocabulary, and a damn handsome man, Joel the ladies call me Fred Flintstone because I make their bedrock Gerner. <laughs> Introducing at this time, standing in the ring. Be- well, I guess the Sandman and Tommy Dreamer. So sorry. Ah, shit. But that's why right. the thing with Gold Joel. They call me Fred Flintstone because I make the ladies bedrock. Good shit, man. You going to try that on Lois later? No, 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 no. You're so so bored at home that you count the hairs. No. (laughs) Okay. Must be just me. Must be just you. Absolutely. Hey, so next week, uh, we've got, uh, Raw 2003. I think you've already mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, we got a couple of ECW things coming up in June. Don't we? we've got a heat wave 2000 coming up in July. Hardcore heaven coming up in okay. of 97 coming up in August. You watching the video. I think this might be your speed. Whoa. Have you thrown her in your Google machine? That's his wife, right? Yeah. That's Tommy's wife. Yeah. <laughs> so you haven't thrown her in your Google? No, I have not. I threw her in my Google. Mm-hmm. What'd you come up with? She's in there. Oh, well, I'm sure she is. Just about everybody's in there. You're in there. No, I'm not. You know? You know? I can hear you typing. It's hard for me to type and, uh, 
let me just say it's pretty, 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 pretty good. She's, yeah, she's, she's good looking, good looking lady. You're looking at what I think you're looking at? Nope, not yet. <laughs> of course, we're talking about the watch along here, Wrestle Palooza 1998. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's a beautiful girl. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. Dun, 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 dun. Build from the pages of Plant Hat. Plant, plant, plant Hat. Look at this, man. You okay? Yep. I'm, I'm like good. You got a little tongue tied there. Mm-hmm. So Sandman's still on a stiff neck like he's hurt. Hmm. <laughs> Bubba Ray wants his ass in. So no, wait a minute. What's, is there a story behind this neck selling job or is he really hurt? Is there a difference? No. By the way. I guess, I guess not. Can you and I dress up as the Dudley boys for Halloween? Um, I'll be, I'll be Bubba. Okay. I'll, I'll be the other. No, I won't. What? I'll be spike. Well, why don't we call you sign guy Dudley? <laughs> Cyanide. What'd you say? What type sign, of Dudley? sign guy Dudley sign guy Dudley. And we'll get the actual Joel Gertner mm -hmm. and, uh, we can get Matt Coon to be big dick Dudley, but we'll call him little dick Dudley. And where are we going to go? The house, the house like that, or a party? What yeah. are we going to do? Well, we'll all be six feet apart in my house. <laughs> Even in October? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, Ron Funches has a, uh, a Dudley Boy shirt. We'll let him be Devon. He's got like a real one, dude. Like a real Dudley Boy shirt. That'd be great. We'll go do some high spots. Yeah, I figure what we would do is just lay you out over a table. <laughs> and then me and Ron would drag New Jack to the balcony by the pool <laughs> and just toss him off, you know? I don't mean toss him off like in the British way. Yeah, I got it. I do feel like you're going to be tossing off to those penthouses earlier, though. No, I'm not. Mm -mm. Really? Oh, that's right. You told me that you don't ever touch it. Uh, not anymore. No. My smells. Hmm. <laughs> Tell me taking a bath in that stuff. Well, you would too. <laughs> I was talking about beer. Oh, I have to say this about ECW, especially about this show. They certainly do know how to make milk an entrance. Just about everybody's milked an entrance here. Yeah, it's more, it's too much. It's, it's house show like. Yeah, you're right. It is because when we're trying to do a watch along on top of it. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. We run out of shit to say. Can I ask you something? That cricket sound? Do you ever play that when Bischoff's talking? No, I never have. Yeah, please. I dare you. <laughs> you think I won't? No, I don't think you will. I only got the balls to. Really? Really. You've heard me fuck with people. What are you talking about? Yo, you fuck with everybody. Yeah. But just uh, just at the end of it, he's, when he pauses, just hit it. Hey, Tony, and Shavani, him, let... Tony Schiavone said hit it. <laughs> <laughs> and then just hit the, uh, you know, hit the, uh, the cricket sound and then cut it out and then have him keep talking and pretend he didn't even hear it and not no, you do a non-sell on it. So, Oh, I've done a few of those. No, oh, I bet. No, All right, here we no. go. Here we go. Finally. Punch. Devon and 3d. What's supposed to be the backstory of the Dudleys? What do you mean? Well, are they they're supposed to be nerds type? No, they're brothers. Okay. Their dad slung dick all over the town. Okay. Back in Dudleyville. 
back in Dudleyville. Okay. So now they're all half brothers because they got okay, different got mamas. It. I got okay. it. But they all, I mean, like, uh, didn't at one time, didn't Bubba Ray wear these nerd glasses? Black rim glasses yeah. with tape on the, yeah. on the nose bridge. Yeah. Yeah. So like, they were like nerds. Well, I think, um, what's that movie from the eighties? It's like a hockey movie that they, uh, that was like, a yeah, comedy. it's, uh, yeah, it's with Paul Newman slap shot and, and there's the yeah, slingshot and those Hanson brothers to uh, the triplets. Yeah. yeah. So that's, it was Raven's okay. idea and he made them the Dudleys. Got it. But I th- get that. That's what they're sort of loosely based. No, very cool. With your penis. That that's a pretty cool movie, as a matter of fact. Still never, today. Never saw it. Oh, you never saw it? No, I don't like hockey. I think it's terrible. Well you Okay. What? I don't like soccer either. Well, I don't either, but if it's a good movie, I'm gonna see a good movie. Oh, okay. So you saw uh, Peanut Butter Falcon, you like that? I uh, no, it's a terrible movie. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't like peanut butter. Well, there wasn't any in there. Oh, see? How about that? So you're just lying to me. Yes, I am. Did you see Parasite? I did not. Did you see I don't like parasites. Oh, Jesus. So you just watched like... Oh. Fuck. Uh, MILFs get a deep black massage, 13? No. Well, I mean, <laughs> you say you're not going to watch movies. If you don't no. Like what the name of it is. Oh, by the way, have you ever seen like what they name adult films on cable and, and direct TV? No, I don't watch adult films. Uh, I'm not saying you do, but I'm saying if you just have your DVR and you go through your channel guide, uh-huh. holy cow, they have some descriptors in there. Do they really? I didn't think some of that stuff would be legal. Yeah. Well, got to be able to sell it, right? I don't know, man. Man, look at this. They are, they are throwing out all the stops in this match. Safety rail over the top. Bicycle rail, if you will, throwing the Dudleys against it. New Sandman will do the flip on it. Mm. It just it becomes a point. I think I may be right. I may be wrong, but it becomes a point to where you have. I mean, if New Jack just jumped off the top of the balcony with a guitar, yeah, then it. it it becomes a point to where these things are no longer, no longer have the impact with fans that they have. Am I right? Correct. Yeah. I have a feeling I'm right. How'd you get so smart, Tony? I don't know. Maybe just using the, what do they got now? They're just so smart. Were they helping Sandman out? (laughs) Yep. Let's put the, put the neck brace on him. Roll his ass out. Could have a spinal injury. Roll him out quickly. Meanwhile, we'll just bump right beside him. <laughs> yeah. What well, had what would Gordon Sully have called that? A suple? Eh, eh. Mm-hmm. Eh, eh. Double team vertical suple. Meanwhile, we're concerned about the thirty-two movable vertebrae down eh. the back of Sandman. Eh, eh. Eh, eh. What is the eh, eh noise? I don't know. I don't know if Gordon really did an eh, eh. But he used to go, eh, or uh uh-uh. uh, shouldn't have done that. Maybe that's where it came from. You ever gone back and listened to somebody's commentary? Every now and again. Yeah, some of the old stuff's really, really good. When I want to hear, like, you know, somebody do a good job at commentary, I mm-hmm. always try to look for Jim Ross or Gordon Foley. That's they're the two best ever. We agree. Yep. We sure do. So now Sandman's out. Tommy's all alone. Blood splattered all over the ring. Thanks to new Jack. And the Dudleys are going to take out their wrath on our buddy, Tommy dreamer. I think they're going to try to hit him in the no, no, I believe no. so. Oh, he's back up. Tommy. It's a lot of weight <clears throat> to come off the top rope like that. Wow. And he just did right at the end, did a little flip to be able to not knock him on his back of his neck. So how many stars this match get besides, I think you already told me like one and a half, something like that. Yeah. You maybe should pay attention. Maybe start taking a little note or whatever. No, I don't have to take notes. You can always tell me again. Negative one star. Negative one star. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 
Who's the other Dudley down at the bottom here? That's old Big Dick. Big Dick Dudley? Yep. Okay. Big Dick Dudley. Yeah. And that, he is, uh, he's loosely based on uh, Horsecock Shivani. <laughs> Knew him very well. <laughs> you're really, you're really searching for shit to talk about in this show. Aren't you? Buddy, we got nothing on this one. <laughs> I mean, you're not even trying today. So I'm, I am trying. I'm over oh, there's nothing like powder to the face. Come on, for God's sake. All right. Here's where we are. We're reading porn of comments. <laughs> Here's one of my favorite ones. Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Pornhub comments on what happened when. And now with the comments, here's Conrad Thompson. Toxic Destiny writes, this is good, but it's not as good as potato salad. Red Engine E replies, agreed. Is that it? That was a pretty good one, you don't think? <laughs> Potato salad is pretty good. Immersed writes, this totally happened to me. Not the part where he gets knocked out or fucks two skinny bitches, but I wore a blue shirt one time. <laughs> oh my God. <clears throat> Nut shot along the safety rail. Come on now. YouTube to MP3 writes. Watch out. Oh, they completely missed him. <laughs> Do blonde people breath? <laughs> Do blonde people what? Breath. Breath? Breath. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Well, uh, yeah, boy, this is, uh, what was the reason that you wanted to watch this show again? <laughs> well, because it happened around the same time and you hadn't seen okay. it. Okay. Oh, Spike. A little bit of life into the party here. <laughs> oh, he's turned his back on these Dudleys, or he's already done that? He busted his ass right there. Here you go. Here's Chipotle Aoli. <laughs> they write, I was offered sex with a 21-year-old girl today. In exchange, I was supposed to advertise some kind of bathroom cleaner. Of course, I declined because I'm a person with high moral standards and strong willpower. Just like Ajax, the super strong bathroom cleaner, now available scented vanilla or lemon. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Now, that's pretty good. I like that. ECW, ECW, ECW. So I take it that Spike Dudley and the Dudley boys have had their fallen out. They kicked him out. They beat him up. He's the runt of the litter. Right. We've seen him take some bumps, man. In previous episodes of what happened when here comes Tommy dreamer. Oop. Joel Gertner hanging on. Here comes big Dick. Referees tied up. That wasn't Joel Gertner. Who was that over, over on the white? Right with the white on. That's Beulah. That's no, no, that's not Beulah. The guy with the sign guy Dudley. Sign guy Dudley. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Found the new funny one, Tony. <laughs> hey, this match is getting good, man. The long neck too, right? <laughs> that dildo she's using is longer than my neck. <laughs> I'm peeing a little. Oh. John oh. Dorian writes so the best part of fucking your wife's best friend <laughs> is when she yells out, Yeah, fuck your wife's best friend. <laughs> Oh, that's so tremendous. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, you are. Dude, you don't think that's hysterical? That's funny. Yeah, that's great. I'm sorry. <laughs> got all over me. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, Sandman back in with a kendo. <sighs> Look at Bubba Ray Cell. Tickle me. <laughs> he just, he's fucking whacking him. My God. A lot of shit going down in this match. Here we go. One, two, three. Spencer would say, finally, they built to the spot where the Dudleys were in the ropes and paid back for the Florida angle with Sandman clocking Devon with the cane and Dreamer clocking Bubba with a chair, followed by them each delivering a DDT and a simultaneous pin, negative one star. The next match is uh, mm. Sabu and Rob Van Dam and Meltzer would say this was a stunt show devoid of any heat and psychology. I, am I wrong to think that, that Meltzer always liked Sabu? No, he didn't. Okay. A stunt show devoid of any heat and whatever, right? So yeah. we got two more matches to go in this thing. Yep. Two, too many. Too many. Look at Tommy. <laughs> All right. ECW television title. Wow. Didn't you tell me that Sabu was still wrestling? Yeah. I mean, he's not right now. There's a pandemic going on. Nobody's right. Well, well, I get that stupid son of a bitch, but I, uh, but I mean, at his age, he's still out there on the independent circuit when you can wrestle going out and doing it. Right. Yeah. You should get him a job with AEW. Yeah. I can't get anybody a job with AEW. No, I know. I've been trying. <laughs> Bullshit. That's not, uh, that's, that's absolutely true. Like a month no, ago. No, no, listen, I'm, I'm just a fan who does mortgages for a living in podcast. Don't give me that bullshit. I hear that all the time. Well, I'd love to be in the business, but nobody wants me. You see, Jesus Christ. I'm just saying I had a text conversation with you and Cody like six weeks ago and I was expecting a contract offer and it never came. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess I'll just have to wait for COVID 2021. <laughs> oh God. Look at the way that table broke, dude. Wow. That's the building where Van Dam won the ECW title. I mean, the TV title. Hmm. Now they are wrestling for it. It's a respect match for the TV title. Look at Fonzie. Jesus. <laughs> oh, here we go. You want to track, track Fonzie? It. Live on pay per view. Want to know who Bill Alfonso is going to manage? Is Bill Alfonso going to manage? Sabu, suicidal, genocidal, homicidal. Sabu, baby. Who am I going to manage? <laughs> or is Bill Alfonso going to manage the best wrestler on television today? Mr. Monday Night, Mr. Monday Night, Rob Van Dam. Well, I'm going to manage both. I'm going to manage Mr. Monday Night, and Bill Alfonso is going to manage Taboo. So either way you look at it, Bill Alfonso is walking out of the building with the ECW Television Championship. Well, the one man who is in a no-lose situation here is former referee Bill Alfonso, the manager of record for both the champion, Mr. Monday Night, Rob Van Dam, and the challenger, Sabu. We still don't have the, the answer. To Look who that is climbing in the ring. Oh, my God. This was worth the wait. Here's the audio. Jeff, Jeff Jones, who has been on the take for about eight months. Jeff Jones, who is in the pocket of Bill Alfonso and everybody else. One more time for the ECW World Tie Team. Oh, by the way, I, uh, 
Jeff Jones and I, you know, you know, communicate almost on a daily basis. That's a shame. And uh, there was this thing on uh, on our YouTube channel that said Tony Schiavone shoots on Jeff Jones. Oh, really? Yeah, a little. And I don't know what it was, but Jeff sent it to me today. He copied it and pasted it on a text. I never did open it. I need to listen to it because I always talk well about him. You always shit on him. That's not true. And I always talk well about him. So he's been on the take now. So now is he going to be the evil referee here? Or is he going to do it? So I'll just give you a spoiler. Or do you want to watch the goddamn no, show? No, I'll watch the goddamn show. Okay. <laughs> 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 How come you didn't like my uh, <laughs> Pornhub comments? <laughs> because they're too good. They'll take over our show. We got to get back to doing what we do best. Well, we, we can't. Do I that don't know today. what that is, Honestly, but we got to get back to doing it. I'm like, dude, you're not paying attention. It doesn't exist today. We don't have it. We've we don't have it. it. In other words, you and I are, are flopped on this one. Yeah. So I'm trying to entertain us. With comments okay. Well, we can we can shit on Jeff Jones for ten minutes here. It'll entertain us. Okay. You go first. Okay, look at that fat motherfucker trying to be a referee. Tony, you're going to have to stop with all the fat shaming. Okay, sorry. I'll eat right into the microphone again. <laughs> look, at, look at that plump motherfucker. How many uh, how many crab cakes do you think he's had at Jimmy's Famous Seafood? At least one a day, every day. Yeah. I have a, I have a lot of time for Jeff Jones. I'm trying to look for comments right now for you. <laughs> Please don't. What? Come Oh, you're talking about porn comments, porn hub comments. Why are you saying that? Okay. What? Okay. Come on. Come on. RVD baby TV champ. Here we go. It's gotta be a great match. Woo. It's gotta come on now. Woo. 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 Rob Van Dam, man. All right. So I'm looking up Tony Schiavone's Twitter handle. <sighs> Jesus. What? Don't look up my Twitter handle. Well, you don't want me to look up porn comments either. What do you want no, me to do? No, don't look up anything. Watch the match. Comment on the match. Talk okay. about it. Come on. We're doing good. We're having a good show here. All right. He's walking around. He's holding his belt. He's looking at the camera. Left yep. foot, right <laughs> foot, right foot, left foot, foot, foot. Lick, lock, lick. Lock. So it's Robbie Van Dam. Pretty damn good television champion, right? Uh, he was the best they ever had, Tony. Really? Yeah. Okay. In the annals of ECW TV champs, could he's, you tell me who was the best? Would it be Robbie Van Dam? Yes, sir. I just said that okay. with my mouth. Or okay, he's the best one. Who uh, who would rank second? Taz. As Taz would. Okay. Ooh. Could get some heat there. What? Saying Taz. Taz. Anybody's better than Taz. And there you see Jeff Jones going through the uh, pantomime motion of saying nothing. And uh, Fonzie is the, I guess, I don't know who he is the manager of in this one. Both guys. But you see Linda Ruffalo, Ruffalo down uh, taking pictures. You want to know Jimmy some Suzuki down taking pictures as well. You want to know some other TV champions? Yes, I do. Jimmy Snuka. ECW TV champ. Terry Font. Okay, that's a pretty good Sa list so far. Sabu. Okay. Mikey Whipwreck. Okay. Two Cold Scorpio. Well, how about that? Dean Malenko. Whoa. Andy Guerrero. Holy shit. Chris Jericho. Motherfucker. Shane Douglas. So seeing that Rob Van Dam's the best is saying a lot, right? Bam Bam Bigelow. Wow. Super crazy. Oh, super crazy. Yoshihiro Tajiri. Yeah, him too. Rhino. Oh, that Rhino. Kid Cash. Kid Cash. Pit Bull number two. Oh, is he? Man, he was a, he was a pit bull. The pit bull. Oh boy. Jason. As in the movie? No, you saw him earlier. JT okay. Smith. Who? JT Smith. Okay, never heard of him, he I don't a, think. He was a black guy who was a full blooded Italian. Okay. That's a pretty good list. Yeah. But now here we go, man. Here we go. RBD and Sabu. Look at Sabu trying to do a leg takedown, just a leg dive. Leg diving. Look at that referee moving around the ring, huh? So you were making fun of him before. He's kind of locked in the corner there. Oh, there, he, there he, he took one step out, and now he steps back to the corner. I'll just rest here. You guys just go ahead and hook it up. Okay, I'm just kind of leaning up against the rope here. You guys go ahead and hook it up. There's another leg. Oh, shit. They leg, they leg dive towards me. I had to move out of the way. Hey, Tony. Yeah. This match is over 30 minutes. 
Are you shitting me? No. <laughs> Whew, I guess you're not. Because we got two matches to go. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> okay. As you can tell, the referee is still in the corner. <laughs> that son of a bitch, a referee ain't moving. <laughs> Come on. I got to take a picture of this and tweet that son of a bitch right now. Uh, it's too good. <laughs> that is too good. I'm going to say between right now. I'll say this damn referee has not moved out of this corner. Ain't gonna. <laughs> oh, God. What's your favorite Sabu match? Uh, didn't we do one with he and Taz? Yep. First ECW oh. pay-per-view. That's the one. Yeah. That's the one. I believe it. Okay. So have you okay. been, have you been, uh, eating anything different during the pandemic? You doing more grilling or what's your diet like now? Uh, we've done a lot of Uber eats. Oh, that checks out. And uh, grilled cheese. You like grilled? Nothing like good grilled cheese. What do you think? Yeah, my wife can uh, make a better grilled cheese than anybody you know. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. Hmm. All right. What uh, makes her grilled cheese so special? Holy shit. Well, she don't think she knows how to cook, so she's got it down <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, dude. Sabu kind of laying in them kicks here. He don't wow. Know. He don't know it. Fuck. Hmm. Try to split leg moonsault. That didn't work too well. Honey, I'm struggling with the idea that we got 50 minutes of this show left. Hmm. We sure do. How do you think the fans were feeling at this time? Tired. I'm sure they are, man. Because again, you see, see that you know that as as great a move as that is, and that is a great move. That's a uh, that's a uh, tope con horon. Um, after a guy's jumped off the balcony, and after they've used safety rails to beat guys to death with, it, it doesn't mean anything. I know I'm right about this. You can you can join in the conversation anytime you like here. Sorry. What? Oh, sorry. You walked out to the room. Hey. <laughs> Get back in your seat. Watch this match. You'll learn something. Learn something. It's a Sabu match. <laughs> what is there to learn from a Sabu match? Don't know. Learn what not to do. Okay. Uh, he is the nephew of the original Sheik, right? Or related to him or something? Yeah, something like that. Okay. I don't think he shot out of his dick or nothing. No. Mm, there he goes. He finally got it, what he tried to do at the beginning, and now he finally got it done. If there was a sound effect for a Sabu match, you know what it would be? What? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Hmm. There goes the referee back in the corner now. If there was a sound effect for Sabu reading his match ratings in the Observer, do you know what it would be? No. (laughs) 
if there would be a sound effect for this pay-per-view or or better yet this <laughs> podcast <laughs> Welcome to Wrestle Palooza 1998. Tony and Conrad, we are going to knock it out of the park this week. Three, two, one, hit it. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. It's not our best work, Conrad. <laughs> you think? <laughs> well, you want me to go back to my go to? No, I don't. Pussy. Hey. Uh, I sent a note to uh, to Jeff Jones. I gave him a picture of him in the corner. I said, he finally moved out of the corner. He said, I had promos on TV after. So is he going to do a promo on this show? He probably doesn't even remember. Uh, he was doing uh, the wrestler diet at this time. <laughs> What's the wrestler diet? Go to bed around 4 a.m. Yeah. Wake That's up fine. just afternoon. Mm-hmm. Eat a big bowl of cereal. Yeah. Uh, go to the gym. Don't do anything there. Just look at other guys. <laughs> Bullshit. Talk to yeah. chicks. Mm-hmm. Then go to Burger King. Get four Whoppers, meat only. Eat it with your bare hands. Rub the grease on your pants. Pull Sounds up like social a- media. Talk shit about how back in your day, kids knew how to grab a hold and understood that you got to sell gimmicks at intermission. And then when you're done with that, you go to your house and get in your recliner, fire up some old shoot interviews, some Japanese tapes, scroll the observer, tweet about how he don't know shit. Take a couple somas, (laughs) wash it down with some Jack Daniels that you gargle. (laughs) What am I saying this right right so far? <laughs> Sounds like a great day to me. Wow. Get a call from Ric Flair, follow his <laughs> advice, go to KFC, ask for 40 chicken breasts, bring them home, peel the skin off one and eat it, leave the other 39 on the counter to waste. <laughs> Wake up tomorrow, go around to every bedroom and say you're sorry. Go to Gucci.com, buy everybody in the house. A new purse, man or a child. <laughs> Pay for overnight shipping. Call the bank to tell them to approve it, even though it's over your daily limit. <laughs> then call Vince, ask for a draw. <laughs> then leave a scathing voicemail two hours later when he didn't call you right back. <laughs> tell him you quit and you're going to work for Dixie Carter. <laughs> Oh God. Order Mexican food to go. (laughs) Say, give me the whole menu. Go pick it up. (laughs) Bring it back. Just just get the bowl of salsa. Take a single chip and eat the salsa, but never eat the chip because you're counting carbs. So just suck the salsa off a soggier and soggier chip with every passing dip. This is too good. Call your son-in-law. Say, can you believe that show last night? So-and-so is the shits. Of course, I can't say anything. I don't want to get heat. God damn. Did Ash look good or what? Well, anyway, I love you, man. Gotta go. Wendy Wendy wants another round of Mexican. (laughs) Oh, shit. That's too good. That's been the highlight of the show not saying much no it's not but it has been i thought the highlight of the show for you is when you laughed for eight minutes straight about the only difference between bug and lois is facebook <laughs> yeah that's gonna be uh it's gonna be remembered for quite a while i wonder if the kids are gonna say that and get you <laughs> and me both heat no i don't think so luckily i don't give a shit it's not like she's ever given me my six-man belt so mm. What do I care? Hmm. Do you know that Lois doesn't really like the stuff that Britt Baker and I are doing? I believe that. But it's it's entertainment. Yeah, is it really? 
Yeah, it, it really is. No, I mean, I heard y'all were shoot together. Like Adam oh, Cole's. No, no, see, you're lying. Stop it. You know that's not true. Tony, you could cut the sexual tension with a knife. <laughs> You can tell that she wants that Tony Schiavone, baby. Oh, stop it. Why did I, why didn't I even go down this road with you on know. this one? You fucked up. That's why. Yeah, I did. I was really looking forward to what was proposed on adfreeshows.com. You versus mm. Dr. Britt Baker in a pull a tooth match. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I need you to get one of your fake teeth pulled by Britt Baker. That'd be so good. Hmm. Who knows where they're going to go with this? By the way, do you know what pops up when you type in Britt Baker, what the suggestions are on Google? What? Number one. Do you want to guess? Uh, Adam Cole. Dentist. Dentist. Okay. Now, if you type in the word Taz, T-A-Z, do you want to know what it suggests? Bro. Taziki's menu. (laughs) Hmm. Hmm. Didn't think that would be it, but there you go. One of the suggestions was ECW Taz quotes. So apparently Hmm. there's a whole site that's just quoting Taz. Are you serious? A whole site that quotes Taz? Well, it's just got quotes from famous people and there was only one quote. So I'm looking to see if there's more. Okay. Got really excited for a minute though. Yeah. Thinking, damn son. Yeah. Cause I'd be using them. Oh, you'd have to. Mm -hmm. I only know the one. Beat me if you can survive if I let you. Yeah. And, you know, stuff about I'm going to bust you up so bad and blah, blah, blah. Look at that big guy in the front of that green shirt. Is that Paulie with a beard? Why are you Why are you doing that? Whoa, how about that? Did Paulie not call you back? No. Should we just not his, in, it's not it at all. Maybe we should just give his phone number on the show. <laughs> we'll get back at him, right? No, what? If you're upset with him. I'm not upset with him. Well, you've been trashing him the whole show. I have not been trashing him. All right, I well, just here- said that, that Paulie has kind of gained a little weight in his day, should, but we all have. Should we give him the, um, should we give the real phone number? No, we shouldn't give any phone number at all. Hmm. I'll just give one digit. And get everybody started. No, don't, no, don't even give one digit. Nine. <laughs> Boom. Can't tell me nothing. By the way, if you type in Paul Heyman, you know what the first suggestion is? Fat ass. Wife. Okay. Then age, then ECW, then height, then salary, then young, then net worth, then family, then 2020. Hmm. Is he married? Um, I believe so. Hmm. Put me in a bad spot there. Okay. Sorry. He had a wife. But he ate her, right? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Listen, maybe if, you ate, maybe if you ate your wife a little more, y'all would be on speaking terms. <laughs> you know what's fucking shitty? When I just Googled my name, the first suggestion is wife. God damn it. I'll never get well, over on my there you, own. There you go. Fuck. Oh, my God. I just I Googled that and it says Thompson resides in Huntsville, Alabama, where he still operates his mortgage company. He married his wife, Megan Fleer in 2018, becoming Ric Flair's son-in-law in the process. Mm-hmm. What a weird deal. What really? You don't think you do. You didn't think once you married her that this would not go to become a talking point on the internet. Oh my gosh, dude. There's lots of weird stuff out there. Yo, yeah, Really? <laughs> A lot of weird stuff on the internet. Really? Dude. Fuck. Meanwhile, they, they picked it up here a little bit in this match. Wow. Now that's pretty fucking good. There you go. Get into it, Tony. You're not even watching this match, are you? No, this is one you, of the worst ones on the show. You're just, uh, you're just kind of just like letting things happen here. No, I'm hoping you'll be interesting or entertaining. You're not engaged. Well, like, God damn it. I'm doing what I can here. What do you want me to see? You want me to sing a song? Yes, please. What what song would you like? I'll play the instrumental. No, I don't play. I wouldn't know what song, what to sing. Okay. Why are you doing this? I write the songs that make the young girls sing. 
I write the songs of love and special things. No, I don't know that one. Let's do this one. I write the songs that make the young girls cry. You know what that is? No, I don't. That's someone beating. How about that? That's someone beating on a plastic uh, Tupperware container. How about now? No, it is now. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, Van Halen, right? Oh, look at you. Yeah. Okay. Come on now. <laughs> Van Halen used that, was beating on a uh, on a Tupperware container. I didn't realize that. You're all right. Me, I'm great. I've just, I'm not going to get two and a half hours of this back. No, we're not. This is a bad call. This is on me. <clears throat> yeah. I've had some good calls. This is not yeah. one of them. Yeah. I'll, I'll take it. Okay. Oh boy. Now I want to see this spot. Come on, do it. Suplex him on that table. No. Hey, whose ECW theme music was this? Okay. Shane Douglas. Okay. Okay. The only one I know is Inner Sandman. That's the only one I know. So, whoa, fuck. Just throw a fucking chair at him. Jesus Christ, guys. I'm going to play uh, a song when now snow comes out, though, because you got to get in the mood for it. Okay. Here we go. Oh, fuck. Table spot didn't even work. Fucking table spot didn't even work. <laughs> they were going to DD team on it and they just slid off of it. So uh, we're going to make it work. <clears throat> Look at that table. Yeah, this is not RVD's best moment, is it? I mean, Robbie did some good shit, but not here. Fuck. <clears throat> Fuck. He's setting up a broken table. <laughs> He's setting up a broken table. He's what happened to a referee? Something. He's got to put him through something. Fuck. At that <laughs> the table collapsed. Everybody cheers. Yay, baby. Great job. The fucking table collapsed. It didn't collapse. It broke. You're being a hater. It collapsed. You're being a hater. Oh, now he's puking. Oh my God. Well, I mean, this is what you wanted to see, right? I wanted to see this me. Yeah. Well, it's not what I wanted to see. I wanted to see a Whitney Wright feature film. <sighs> well, uh, compared to this, that, that might not be bad, uh, at all, but cause this sucks, man. What, Yikes. What would be more hardcore? A Whitney <laughs> Wright feature film or a Sabu Rob Van Dam match? Uh, well, Whitney writes, I don't think would it be a bunch of, uh, well, it may be choreographed high spots. <laughs> oh no. yeah, for sure. And here's the thing. I don't know if you've seen any of her moves. They yeah. didn't even try to cover up, you know, them calling spots. Like they yeah. announce, you know, their next move. Right. Like it, it's, it's kind of weird. You know, they're, they're really exposing the business. Well, they kind of get you ready for it. Don't they? I guess. Well, I don't know. It's. To each his own. Man, what is going on here? Just random punches. Just they, uh, well, I, I think a lot of this is, and maybe I'm wrong. A lot of this is that these two guys who obviously, I mean, Van Damme is one of the great performers or holy shit. Oh my God. <laughs> Catapult that didn't even work. Uh, these, I think these guys are kind of blown up right here. It's going to go 30 minutes. I mean, Jesus Christ. Without question, they're blown oh, up. Oh my they're God. Just, he, he missed that punch too. Everything sucks right now. Yeah, it does. Including, and let's uh, be honest, we've said it many times so far, including the referee. 
Oh, most of all the referee. Oh, fuck. Well, that's a great way to get a hernia in your asshole. <laughs> Which is also known as a hemorrhoid, right? Oh, I don't know. I was just making up silly stuff. Oh, okay. Make, well, you might as well make up shit because that's what they're doing here. Hey, speaking of making up silly shit, have you seen, you know, I, I don't know that we've talked about this a lot here on the show, but Twitter is free, right? It's a free app. Yeah. And let, are they starting to charge now or something? What, no, what, what, I'm just what saying, are you here? I don't think I've ever been as embarrassed, entertained, horrified. I learned a term from my daughter. A couple of years ago. Okay. Uh, secondhand embarrassment. Are you familiar with this? Uh, no, I'm not. It would secondhand embarrassment is what a lot of people experienced when they watched Michael Scott on the office. Okay. So he would and, say and do dumb shit. And then uh, you are embarrassed for him. Right. You, you follow me? Yeah. This is probably Robbie van. D this like Robbie van Dam rewatching this match. Well, I was going to say Matt Coon recently. Uh, received money from a human what um to perform music at their wedding and since of course no one can have a traditional wedding they had him do a zoom video so so instead of hiring a band they hired matt coon for a zoom video and uh, what they requested was him doing the bruno mars song 24 karat magic Yikes. and i encourage you tony to go find this no on your twitter machine no. Yes. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to send you a link right now. Okay. And I'm going to need you to take a look and, and you can listen. I need you to listen to it. Like it's him singing. We're not going to get in trouble. So quit all your, your pussy shit, <laughs> uh, but I'm going to send it to you right now. And I need you to just watch this in real time. Okay. But then we'll have a discussion of what was a bigger train wreck. This mm -hmm. Rob Van Dam Sabu match mm -hmm. or this Matt Coon mm -hmm. situation. Okay. Should be in your phone meet, right? I, now. I see it. A friend of mine getting married on zoom tonight. They wanted me to pre-record song and video due to zoom audio issues. So I may have went overboard. Oh God. That's what that's. That's the, uh, that's the preamble, the preamble, the excuse. Okay. For short notice, but this is the oldest, fattest, whitest version of at Bruno Mars ever. You've been warned. He's okay. trying, he's trying to ease you in here. Okay. All right. Pinky brings up to the moon. What you're trying to do. 24 karat magic in the air. Head to toe, so play a look out. The video makes it worse. Yeah. Because there's five Matt Coons. Okay, it's a fucking wedding song. Yeah. Did he say pimp get it in? Yeah. Oh, God. We too fresh got to blame it on Jesus. Hashtag blame. Stay ready for me. I'm a dangerous man with some money in my pocket. Keep up. So many pretty girls around me and they're trying to wake the rocket. Keep up. Why are you mad? Fix your face. Ain't my fault. Y'all been chalking. Keep up. Come on. Put your piggy rings up to the moon. Hey, girls. What you trying to do? 24 karat magic in the air. Yikes. Head to toe, so play it. Put your piggy rings up to the moon. 
It okay. Makes, it makes me want to put my gun in my mouth <laughs> now. So, ladies, try to puke up. Keep up. And throw up. Dude. Okay, uh, that was 213 in length of everybody. Uh, sorry to interrupt this great match for that, <laughs> but that's 213 of your life that you won't get back. <laughs> Dude, you didn't miss anything in this fucking match. Wow. There's the chair number 400 or table number 400 is coming in and this one's broken. As soon as it slid <laughs> it in, it broke. And now he's still going to pretend like, oh, I'll just set it up right here. Scoot that leg out. Bam. <laughs> down it goes. Uh, for those of you who care, we're at 210, 47, 48, 49, 50. <laughs> <Just> collapses. <laughs> Dude, I feel bad for him. I do too. I, I feel, I feel bad for, I feel bad for, uh, Big fat Paul E sitting in the front row there that Olive shirt on. I, Why do you I, keep messing with him? That's Paul. I, I've said it before. That's Paul E. Edwards. Paul Edwards of Georgia. Oh, you know him of Hiram, Georgia. I didn't mean him. I didn't mean it, that he was the same size as Paul E. Dangerously because Paul E's bigger than that. Wait, wait, but wait. I, you, you legit low key know this fellow in the front row? No, I'm just making up shit as we oh. go here. I'm I'm like the I'm like Rob. I'm like Rob Van Dam <laughs> and uh, Sabu. I'm making up shit as we go here. <laughs> so shit. I'm sorry that I couldn't keep up. Uh, throw up. Mm-hmm. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, uh, you don't, you really out there. Uh, and I'm sure you enjoyed that. You don't get the full effect of that until you see Matt Coon, five of them singing. Yeah. Let me just recommend that you go look at it right now. It's at Matt Coon music. Okay. And, and when you see this on Twitter at Matt Coon music, please let him know that what happened when sent you and that he sucks. <laughs> By the way, Tony, we, uh, we took to Twitter about the show and we said on an upcoming WHW, we're getting extreme. Uh-huh. Uh, we're covering ECW Wrestle Palooza 1998. Have a question for Tony. Drop them in the replies and use the uh-huh. hashtag ask Tony. Yeah. Uh, so here we go. Yeah, Got a drop this. Questions. Okay. Uh, number one, yeah. um, great friend of the show, but funny slim. Hey, you bald motherfucker. He says, even though Al Snow did the job to Shane Douglas, you think he still mm-hmm. got some head? And <laughs> I, I think the answer is yes. He, he got about 3000 heads that night. Yeah. I got a lot of them from what I understand. Yeah, you're gonna And he always got a lot. Um, uh, Luke from Eastern Iowa wants to know what would mm-hmm. the Dudley say to Lois if she were ringside? Mm-hmm. Hey, bitch, is that your ass? Okay. Uh, Josh Coon wants to know, does Tony think a joint promotion between ECW and WCW with Eric and Paul working together could have worked and saved both companies? No, it would not have worked. Let me tell you why it wouldn't have worked because of egos back then. Who's going to do the job? Who's going to go over? And if it's somebody from WCW goes over, is ECW going to get pissed off? And does Paul Lee want to go to put all his guys over Eric want to want to put it. it no, it's no way it would have worked. Well, there's the, uh, an ongoing discussion below it said, and this is from Jordan had the two agreed to use the accentuate the positives, hide the negatives mantra. Bischoff could have dealt with the funds and the suits. Heyman could have controlled all the creative. They would have been a deadly duo in 2001. Yeah. Now well, that, there you go. That seems kind of fun. If you would really let Paul run creative and, Bischoff just sort of handles the politics. That might have been interesting. I it would have been interesting, but I still don't believe it would have worked. So look at split leg at moon salt, baby. I just it's easy to sit back here now, you know what, uh twenty years later, twenty two years later, and say, Hey, this would have worked, this may have worked. But I mean, you know, it's it's the Titanic, dude. It's going to go down eventually. Just they put us out of our misery in 2001. That's all. I should play the audio here. They just rang the bell. They ran out of time. Oh, so it's a time limit draw. The fans are confused. Mm -hmm. And by the way, in the observer, we're talking star and a quarter. Not Hmm. very, uh, not a nice rating, but really. I mean, I understand that on, on paper, this looks like a home run. Oh man, Rob Van Dam and Sabu, they're just going to go tear it up. But everybody has off nights. And certainly it feels like these guys had an off night here. Well, 
yeah, they did have an off night. And obviously, like Meltzer said, it's just basically a stunt show. But would they have ever, I mean, had they wrestled before on a big pay-per-view? They've wrestled before many, many times, but okay. uh, not on pay-per-view at this one, I don't think. Okay. Well, then knowing it's a pay-per-view and knowing they're going to try to outdo each other with stunts, I, I just think that you're you're seeing what you're going to get with these two. Hang on, let's fix the fuck up, Jeff Jones. Let's track it. Let's do it. Time limit brawl. A little tug of war for the belt coming up here. Yeah. Looks like. Yeah. Five more minutes. My ass. No, we've had enough. No, exactly. Please. Bring Matt, bring on Matt Coon. No, well, no, no, maybe not. No. Okay. Sorry. I was just getting too excited. Phil Snowden writes at different times. We had big Dick Dudley sign yeah. guy, Dudley Studley yeah. Dudley and yeah. snot Dudley. Yeah. Just so, you know, there was also dances with Dudley. Uh, hypothetically, if Tony and Conrad were in the Dudley boys, what would their name be? Slap Dick Dudley. I knew you were going to go slap Dick Dudley. Of course. Okay. What would mine be? Podfather Dudley. Nah, that sucks. Oh, it does. Okay. Mine would be eating good Dudley. Eating good. Dudley. Uh, Give me a second. I'll think of a better one. Wrestle Geekdom wants to know of all the ECW shows Tony has watched so far. What has, what yeah. have been some of his favorite ECW matches? You know what? I really liked Mike awesome against, uh, Spike Dudley. Wow. Uh, and, but I think my favorite one is Mike awesome against Tanaka. Oh yeah. They tore it up. Yeah. I think it's my, my favorite one. Oh, and any one, any match that Taz had. Sorry. Thank you. Boy, <laughs> Ooh, shit. you saved us both a lot of trouble right there. Yeah, we sure did. Thank you. Sorry, Taz. Any, any match you've ever had is my favorite. Hey, hypothetically. Uh, we had somebody on Twitter ask this. You think we could get a GoPro cam view of Taz dumping you on your head? So like I, you, I, I doubt that. I doubt that. Well, I mean, he can throw you. He's told me several times I, I can't bump anymore, but that doesn't mean I can't bump other people. Well, yeah, well, he's going to throw me eventually because, you know, like I said, because I love him, but he's got that tempo brother and, <laughs> and I just, you know how you just kind of poke the bear yeah. and I can tell when I'm doing it too much, but one of these days I'm not going to be able to tell I'm doing it too much. And then you're just going to see me fly through the air. Dude, he, he'll get hot on you in a hurry. He's just, he wakes up looking for a reason to be mad. <laughs> Does he not? Well, yeah, apparently speaking of people who are mad, let's track chain Douglas here. So now I'll snow. Let's go to the ring and let's find out who's the better man because win or lose after I walk down the aisle, I may not be the world's heavyweight champion, but I will forever in this history, this sport will know me as a fighting champion and as a franchise. Oh man. So here hmm. we see the, uh, the history of him throwing down the uh, NWA world title. That was October. No, I'm sorry. August 27th, 1994. And he lists all the great wrestlers who held it. And he says, and they can all kiss my ass. How did, they, how, how did they get the NWA world title? I'm, what, what, I'm what so, transpired to giving them that title? I'm so glad you asked. Thank you. So there was a tournament. Uh, the NWA was, uh, uh obviously separated from WCW by this point. So we've got to create a new world champion. So they all got together and decided they were going to have the finals here. And, um, all right. When I say here, I mean at the, at the ECW arena. Okay. And Shane Douglas, uh, wound up winning the thing. Dennis Corluzzo is sitting there. He's another big time NWA promoter in the area. Uh, I think he's based out of New Jersey. I could be mistaken, but he was, you know, one of the big NWA promoters in the Northeast and they were working with, uh, Paul Lee, who's uh, Eastern championship wrestling had, um, a little bit of swag. It was actually Todd Gordon's at the time, but Paulie was the booker and Paulie came up with a crazy idea. I believe as the story goes and pitched it to Todd Gordon and they both liked it. And they pitched it to Shane with the understanding that if this got out, then they were, you know, done in the NWA and would really cause some friction and 
Shane went along with it. And so Dennis Carluzzo is sitting there, uh, I believe with the president of the NWA at the time and watch it happen. And they had no idea it was coming. And he would throw it down and then pick up the ECW world title. Instead. Wow. How about that? What a story. What a, what a, Ooh, wish he'd bite on my ear like this. It was, uh, the, the last match was uh, him and two cold Scorpio. Wow. So the belt was vacated through, through the whole ruling with WCW in September of 93. So it's nearly a year later before we crown a world champ, but it was supposed to be Shane Douglas. And, uh, interestingly enough, they wind up doing something different. They have another tournament this time in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, I believe again with Carluzzo and Tracy Smothers is in the finals. Can you imagine a Tracy Smothers in WA world champ? Uh-huh. It didn't happen. Instead, it was Chris Candido, who we know, ironically, would go on to be uh, a part of uh, the triple threat with Shane Douglas. Other NWA champions after that, including Dan Severn, um, Gary Steele, Sabu, Steve Carino, Shinya Hashimoto. Mm, yeah. And then uh, Ken Shamrock won it here in Huntsville, Alabama in June of 02. And that's when NWA TNA kicked off and they went nuts for a bit. Uh, and then eventually, of course, they separate from, uh, from TNA and when you, when you say went nuts for a bit, what, what, what exactly you, you mean? Well, I'm just saying they were doing good business and they, they were hot and well, it was like sham. So in Oh two, it went shamrock, Ron killings, Jeff Jarrett. That's through. TNA in a, in yeah. 03, it's AJ and Jeff Jarrett in 04. It's AJ and Ron Killings and Jeff Jarrett in 05. Things start to get a little rocky and it feels like, and hey, maybe, you know, we're going to do some different stuff and people are talking about branching out, but they decide to keep it in the house. So Jeff Jarrett, AJ styles, Raven, Jeff Jarrett, Rhino, Jeff Jarrett. That's all 05. Okay. I mean, it's just like rapid fire title changes. And then eventually uh, they, uh, they end their agreement with TNA in 2007. So they had five years with TNA. Okay. And now purchased by, by Billy, Billy Corgan. Yeah. Yeah. Bought it. I hope the investment was worth it. But some of your old pals have been, uh, you know, the NWA world champion, Cody, of course, won yep. it all in, uh, all September right. of 2018. What a. Historic show that is, I think one of the most important wrestling shows of the modern era. I don't think it can be argued. Um, but then before that, you know, your pal Colt Cabana was champ and mm-hmm. your old buddy, Steve Carino was champ. And yeah, he's man, Carino's old fucker too, by the way. Go ahead. I love Carino. Carino, but he's old. Carino to me is one of the more underrated wrestlers of all time. He's only 46 years old right now. He'll turn really? 47 later this month, but huh. he looks eight. Go ahead. Well, he look yeah, he looks old, but it's, it's not, okay. I started to say it's not his fault, but I guess it is because, uh, self-inflicted. Sure. But I just love giving Steve Carino shit. That's all. You know, oh, that. I, I do too, man. I think yeah. in an era where, you know, smaller guys can now get over, you know, once on a time you had to be a fucking monster if you were going to be in a prime spot and, and that sort of changed a little bit and I can't help but wonder Man, was Steve Carino born like 10 years too early? Because if Steve mm. Carino was 36 right now and not 46, mm-hmm. the motherfucker would be ripping it up. Yeah, yeah, I, I I agree. And he's a baseball guy, big baseball fan, and I like that about him. And I feel for him because I know he has to work with Terry Taylor now. Oh, can you we, the rest of the world has been relieved of that, uh, but not Steve. Hey, I wanted to ask you uh, a story I heard at StarCast, and I, I maybe you can confer, confirm or deny this. All right. I was told at Starcast in Baltimore that okay. Terry Taylor created Ass to Mouth. Uh, th- you and I may have talked about that before. That's what he claims, but I mean, on a Eastern basis, on a Georgia basis, on an NWA, uh, WCW basis, or on a world basis. Well, I don't know. I think his point was I never heard of anybody doing it before I did it. Now oh, I've what? never actually talked to him about this. And it would probably be an awkward conversation if I tried to bring it up the very first time we hung out. Yeah. But, uh, I'm just curious from your standpoint, you think, you think it's true? You think he did it? Uh, I think there probably was a good chance. I think he maybe invented it. Could have. God. 
It's amazing, dude. Because I know he discussed it a lot. Really? Yeah. So it was a regular part of the combo. A regular part of his conversation. Do you want to describe to our listeners? No, but I want to see this. Uh, this uh, first of all, I want to see this head entrance. All right, here we go. It's, it's oh. pretty cool. Track it. Oh, this is what sucks about ECW, man. They're not even playing the real music. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I, but, I hate that so much, but you know what? I'm going to try to fill it in the gaps for you. I don't know. I can't play much. Yeah. No, the no, visual's the good though here. The I visual's mean, visual's great, us. but let me, add yeah. the, let me add the sound for you, buddy. Okay. Go ahead. Sound. Yeah, that sounds like Lois when you finally get a good pump going. Well, no, All right, that's enough. <laughs> no, I just want to make sure we make money on YouTube, you know? Yeah. And boy, old Steve Kaufman's really crushing it for us lately. Boy, he is, isn't he? Huh? God 20 damn. bucks, 30 bucks. Thank oh, you, Steve. Last month we made enough to go to crystals, not together, <laughs> but one of us. <laughs> exactly. Except Dave Silva. No, I'm not sending that motherfucker. You know, I haven't seen him in so long. It's been real nice. I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you're, this, you're lucky because he Look and I this. text about every day. Look at this. That's pretty cool. Dude. How about the camera angles? I know people really, you know, talk shit about Kevin, uh, Dunn and, and, and I think you even use it a lot, rack focus and things like that. And right. But the deal is. For a special entrance like this, it adds to the vibe. And clearly Paul Heyman's going for like a rave type vibe at the time. And right. Hey, speaking of, of raves, have you been to a rave before? Do what? Have you ever been to a rave? I've never heard of a rave. Did you ever like, have you ever done dances with glow sticks? No, uh, I have not. Have, have you ever tried ecstasy? No. What party drugs have you done? Tony? I've done, uh, well, I smoked some pot. I've eaten, I've had some edibles. That's it. That's all I've done. Okay. Well, I need, I need you. Never done cocaine, never smoked crack, never injected anything. No, then. Well, get ready, buddy, because you got a five hour car ride coming up with Jim Ross. <laughs> You're going to learn today. <laughs> so, anyway, what about this rave? Well, I'm just saying, I think it would be funny the visual of you sort of rolling. With some, uh, some glow sticks. I think that would just be tremendous. So there's a uh, raving involves drugs and glow sticks. Well, it's a party. Okay. And so there, right. there'd be loud music and maybe a band or a DJ and, uh, they're going to play loud music with very little lyrics probably. And yeah, um, some tech, some like, uh, yeah. well, el electronica type music. Yeah. Got it. Sounds like a terrible waste of time. Well, then you take some psychedelic drugs and or yeah. some party drugs and, yeah. um, you may drink and you'll just start dancing and sweating and then you'll break out the glow sticks and it'll yeah. look like, like dusty Rhodes. Remember when he'd do like flip flop and fly. Yeah. Imagine if that some bitch had a couple glow sticks in his hands. That'd be something. He's raving now. Not raving, ra raving, Not raving. Raving. Yes. Yeah. But I bet Raven's been to a rave. Yeah. Well, there you go. And that's, that wasn't uh, popular back during that time. It's popular now, right? Or it's been popular throughout. It was popular back then. Okay. I don't know what the kids are doing now. I think they're just eating bath salts and shit now. I don't know. Yeah. I'm old now, Tony. You see, I'm married and. I know. <sighs> your life, your life is slowed down, buddy. That's yeah. okay. It used to be shoe shows and spend the night parties and. Yeah, it was. Ah, uh, the life I had by Conrad Thompson. Yeah. Now I, uh, eat supper about five 30 uh, yeah. and, uh, watch 60 minutes and <laughs> oh my God, call my old pal, Tony Stevon uh, and you don't watch game shows at like seven o'clock, like jeopardy or anything like that. Do you? Or yeah, I watch jeopardy, right? Okay. The price no, is right. And whatever else they have. No, going I don't, on I don't watch prices you, right now. I have to admit, I have watched jeopardy. I don't watch it all the time, but I, I watch jeopardy probably five or six times a year. Yeah. Jeopardy sucks. It's a work. Well, no, everything sucks, Tony. Yeah, if, no. If I've learned anything during quarantine, it's that everything sucks. But the Jeopardy has always sucked because it's a work. Well, but no one, no one, no one knows that much shit. And if they don't, <laughs> if they really know that much shit, then they have no common sense because they have no time for common sense. 
Why, so it's all, that's all a work. Why I can you tell you that right the, now. Why are you hot at these people knowing things? They're just because I, I don't, I don't buy it. Well, I'm, I'm telling the you. The third a, peak in the Malaysian Alps and the third uh, donkey on the left was ridden by <laughs> what? <laughs> and, those, and those fuckers. No. <laughs> oh my God. And those fuckers know it. I, nah, they don't know it. No. Fuck. They can't fucking fool me. You know what? And that's what pro wrestling has done. It has tainted me to, to tell, to television. I don't buy any of this, uh, the bachelor stuff and all these, uh, reality shows. I always thought survivor was a work. I don't, I don't buy any of that shit, man. I don't. What about coronavirus? They, Is coronavirus a work? Uh, for some people it's not, uh, but it, I don't think it's as dangerous as people think overall. Now it's dangerous to people with preexisting conditions, but as far as other people, no, I don't think so. I say, I say coronavirus is the plague for the mathematically challenged. What is that? That's my, that's my feeling on that. The mathematically challenged. Yes. And you want to elaborate? Well, the, the chance of you getting the coronavirus is, is very, is, is not that great. Now it doesn't mean you won't get it, but I don't think it's that great. And I think it's great that we're taking precautions so that elderly people and people with preexisting conditions don't get it. All right. Let's talk. Let's get in our way back machine here for a minute. Okay. Let's talk about some, let's talk about the late seventies. Yeah. Let's talk about the real early eighties. Yeah. As a rule, I'm just going to step out and say, as a rule, Tony Schiavone wasn't wearing a lot of condoms. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought so. Because somebody hit me with the logic of, you, you know, you're not that likely to get it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> uh, well, I feel like you are the king of just the tip back in the day. And just, let's just see how it goes. Let's just, you know. And thus, Matt Schiavone was born. <laughs> 1982. <laughs> uh, yeah, I knew you weren't a condom user. Yeah. yeah, I always threw caution to the wind. But I hope this quarantine is, well, you know, it's, it's, it's slowly. And I, you know what I think is good? What? Uh, I, I think it's that even though like here in Georgia, they are slowly getting back trying to get back to normal. People are still being very leery of that and being very precautious, be, uh, being very cautious. And, uh, I think it's good. I think it's really good. Uh, Hey, we got a match going on here. Yeah. Let's talk about it. They're going to go 13 yeah. minutes and five seconds. Shane Douglas is going to get the uh, pinfall win. Yeah. He gets a star and a quarter. Meltzer would say this came off as one of the most illogical performances by two wrestlers who have been around long enough to know better. The two just did a regular match for getting the entire storyline, whether worked or otherwise that had been built around the match. Douglas even did a leap off the top rope over the guardrail on the snow and actually didn't quite reach his target and could have really done a number on himself in the process. So he breaks down, you know, that it wasn't a great match. And then he says, uh, after the match, all the wrestlers, including numerous ones who weren't, weren't even on the show, like Darren Drozdov, Bobby Duncan Jr. Doug Furness and even Jack victory who now works security with Bill Eady hit the ring and put both men on their shoulders as if we'd just seen a flare steamboat mm -hmm. in their prime. And the two congratulated each other for their classic performance. Even if they had come close, it makes no logical sense since snow had just laid out Douglas's girlfriend actually until the screwed up finished spot, this was a decent match. If there had been no storyline going in that caused it to not make any sense. After the show ended, Paul Heyman gave a speech in front of the crowd saying that he always hated Atlanta, but realized mm. it wasn't Atlanta. He should have hated, but just WCW and claimed that Atlanta was now ECW country. Mm. So I guess the backstory that's not touched on there is Shane Douglas is, is hurting so badly here that he doesn't even fly to the show. He has someone drive him and he's, uh, he's all kinds of gimmicked up here, not in a bad way, but just to fight through the pain. 
He really right, does have a, right. a, a crushed palate. He really does have a shattered elbow. Uh, he's hurting in a bad way and needs surgery. And he's out here doing his best with Al Snow because ECW had Al Snow on loan from WWE and they shined him up and made him into a fucking main event pay-per-view guy here. But Shane Douglas felt the pressure was on him to perform and maybe a little bit of encouragement from Paul Heyman and they're doing their best, but for all intents and purposes, this match shouldn't have happened. Oh, well, yeah. And I, and I see that and I, and I understand that what Meltzer is saying that they are not wrestling to the storyline here, but, and they're two great performers. You know, you and I have mentioned this before Shane Douglas wanted really in his prime, one of the great, uh, one of the great promos, great talkers, and the the head gimmick was over. So I get it, but uh, again, after he, he, here's my thing, and I know this is very old school. After Sabu and and RVD use all the chairs and all the tables, these chairs mean nothing. I don't care what the rules are; they have no impact let because me, you've seen too much of it. Let me mention: Shane Douglas was hospitalized two nights before the show in Atlanta. And he's doing elbow surgery. He's got other medical problems like the sinus and palate injuries that are more significant. Um, right. According to Heyman, Douglas saw about two minutes into the match that they were losing the crowd and Douglas changed the entire match around just wanting to have a good action match. So he didn't sell his injuries at all. And Mm -hmm. his offense consisted mainly of punches and chops and even suplexes using the supposedly broken arm without even selling that individual moves were getting him uh, in pain. So he's. Very critical of the performance. You know, they made a, a, a gut call here to, to sort of switch gears a little bit. Uh, Meltzer's just not a Shane fan though. He says Shane Douglas again, tried to position himself in a live interview as being in the same league of a Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels, but while providing a gutsy performance may well have revived Masawa or Michaels of late, he had no business in the ring and they, those guys didn't put on an embarrassing performance. Surprisingly. Worked a match totally devoid of psychology and storytelling, which ended up exemplifying Douglas looks the look and talks the talk. But after one disappointment after another on big shows, the number of people he's able to convince he can walk the walk must be only limited to the most gullible. Mm. And when it was done, the basic feeling was that Paul Heyman is a miracle worker in the editing booth every Monday. But when the chips are down and it's live, the story is very different. Mm. Only one wrestler on the show wrestled at a major league level, just incredible. And he was a one man show in his match. Oh. Bigelow, who's realistically the best worker in the company, didn't have a chance as he worked a match literally with an opponent who passed out in the middle of the match. My God. <laughs> That's a real thing. So yeah. and you know, oh, look at the cop went down. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's worth mentioning that uh that is what Bruce Pritchard has said for years that Paul Heyman, you know, live ECW sucked. But Paul Heyman was a miracle worker and knew how to, as, as Paul Heyman would say, accentuate the positives, hide the negatives. So yeah. he'd make cool videos and, and music videos and recaps and highlight reels. And, and with the music that he was playing that wasn't licensed, uh, he could convince you that, man, this is some cool shit. But then when you go see it live, it's just a mess. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that criticism was unwarranted and, and I didn't feel like it was fair, but you see a show like this and we've seen some spectacular ECW shows. This is not one of them. No, it's, oh, it's not. And how about that? Just one of the worst rolls ever. And that's it. No. Well, Let's show it. No, I thought for no. sure that reversal was it. No, it, it's coming though. It's coming up off the, the, uh, the left, uh, when uh, he goes up and it's, it's very close. So here come here come the gimmick guys now. Yeah. They're Finger. all out here to, to cheer on what a, what a Matt classic this has been, except, you know, it wasn't, <laughs> but it wasn't right. Ah, oh, my girl's in. Don't no, don't wow. no. He's grabbing her by the throat, Tony. No, and, and now by the cooter. Oh, he gave her. His, he took care of her though. Yeah, good. Oh, oh, Al just gave Chris head. And here comes the fucked up spot. I do believe. Boy, yeah, Axel I, Rotten was way behind on saving Bam Bam Bigelow from making the save. <laughs> watch this. One. Watch this one. Oh. Oh man. Oh, there it is. That's it. One, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, you're a winner. And 
and they're playing the terrible music again. But yeah, mm-hmm. here come the heads. By the way, I had one of these. I was so excited. Yeah. Really? And, and the thing is, you're a kid. You don't fucking know any better. I was so excited to have a goddamn styrofoam head. And I was like, man, this is from an ECW show. This is awesome. And then wow. you realize, uh, you stupid fucker, it's. <laughs> you can get them at any Hobby Lobby. Well, you, you've been buying styrofoam heads on me? Yeah, I've got a styrofoam head. I've got a, bat, I've got a Batman cow on it here in the Batcave. Dude, styrofoam I didn't head. know you were an Al Snow fan this whole time. Well, there you go. Closet Al Snow fan. Well, I'm a closet nothing. Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> Uh, next week though, we're going to watch a really special show and I just can't not wait. It's a raw watch along from May 19th, 2003. And I know what you're thinking. Why in the fuck are you getting excited about watching raw? Well, yeah, because it's got one of the best Ric Flair matches of the era. Really? Uh, he is one night. This is one night after triple H defended his, uh, big gold belt world championship on pay-per-view and they announce the GM, which I believe is Stone Cold Steve Austin. If I remember says, Hey, you've got to defend your title tonight against another, uh, a former world champion, but here's the twist. I'll let you pick who. And of course, at the time, Ric Flair is, is uh, triple H's second. So he's like, okay, I'm going to wrestle Rick. So he does that thinking, well, that's a night off. And then Rick is excited. I've got a fucking title shot. Here we go. And Rick takes it seriously, cuts one of his best promos of the era backstage with triple H. And they go steal the show in Greenville, South Carolina. That's what we're doing next week. And I Very wish cool. we were doing it right now because I'm fucking fired up for it. But unfortunately, <laughs> it looks like it's about that time, Tony. It is about that time, Conrad. Thank you very much. And now coming out for the ring, to the ring, that is, Paulie Dangerously. And also coming out of the ring is Conrad Thompson. And here comes Dave Silva. And now here comes the manager of Dave Silva, Taz. And hang on a second. I've just been given a note, bro. Don't ever mention my name on your podcast again. Or I'll, have you, you ever heard of suplex city Jones? We're desperately out of time. See you next week on what happened when we are on Westwood one every Wednesday, but on Mondays, we are on our great friends on Patron. <laughs> That's www.patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.